What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Ikoria set review. Uh, I'm going to be doing this one by myself this week. And uh, I know we used to do these. Oh, shit, it's Rob, guys. <laughs> Look who it is. Oh, man, what a what a wild ride. I oh. thought I was going to be doing this set review by myself. I had this whole setup because I was like, maybe someone will show up. And here's someone Rob. Did. Guys. Somebody did. Just like Magic the Gathering. <laughs> it's Rob. Um, So, Cool Stuff, Inc., uh, one of the sponsors of the stream, definitely check them out. Every Wednesday, I have a new article go up, and they have a lot of great content. And uh, promo code FRANK5 gets you 5% off. And you can also check out manatraders.com. Uh, they have a great subscription service for Magic Online if you want to play Pioneer, Modern, Standard, whatever. Uh, and you can get 20% off with the link and promo code down below in the descriptions. And uh, those are both great ways to support the channel. And uh, we're going to be going over all of the white cards, the blue cards, the black cards and the colorless cards in this part. And then today on the stream, we're going to also be going over red, green, and gold. Uh, so we're doing them both today, but but it will be two parts on YouTube. So for those watching on YouTube. And uh, that's Swole Mike down below, not a link. <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah, down below, just click on Rob. And, uh, it's, and then he'll point, I'll, I'll, I'll send them this way. We're all, we're all going to keep going down. Just everyone keep going down. So here's one of the things. I Recently, um, I've realized that I'm not... Um, super excited about spoiler season. I used to love it. I used to, every day I would wake up and I would check the spoilers. And I recently figured out why. And the reason is I'm, it's, it's, it's become too overwhelming. I don't know when it happened. But back in the day, for spoilers, like not even that long ago, you would have like two articles on the mothership. Each one would have one spoiler in it. Yeah, And then, you know, there would be a secondary site, like a TCG player or a Cool Stuff Inc. or something, that would have their own spoilers. So you'd get, like, four or five spoilers a day. But now I wake up, and it's like, 48. Hey, right, Blech. spoilers start on Tuesday this week. Okay, so cool, I'll check the site on Tuesday. There's 90 cards already released, and I'm like, <laughs> I can't keep up with this. Full I, can't, I can't process this many cards in one day. And, like, so I think, I think because of that, I've stopped checking... And yeah. now I just wait for us to do the set review, and then like I can read these cards, a lot of them for the first time. So you know one of I mean? the first things, one of the first things I was gonna say before we started was, uh, it's it's actually funny you bring it up. This one was completely different for me as well, and I think I'm generally able to comprehend the amount of spoilers that come in because obviously I like building decks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but there were two main reasons that I struggled uh, with this with this whole uh, set coming out. This specific so, set. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. as we get into this set review, I've seen all these cards. I've read them all, um, but I've not. seen them for a max of like a couple seconds, five seconds as yeah, I'm right. swiping through Twitter. Right? right. You haven't so, processed a lot of them. Right. The The biggest problem I had was two reasons. One, uh, the commander set was being spoiled at the same time. What cards That's are from a lot. what set? It's overwhelming. It's yeah, it's way too much. It, and every was... time I check a card, I have to check the set symbol just to be like, exactly. where is it? Was this a standard card or is this a commander card? Exactly. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, it's overwhelming. Yep, and then I'll be honest with you, the other thing uh, that really kind of ruined it for me was I was so confused with understanding how Mutate works as an ability. Dude, the same, it's such not, a complex ability. I could not like, begin to go, so if I play Grazer on one and I'm I mutate this on uh -huh. two, does it go on top, does it go on bottom? I'm waiting to see it on like Arena and Magic Online. I'm waiting to see the digital representation of it so that I can process it in my head. Where I'm like, because I keep feeling like I'm going to put one card on top and then I'm gonna, supposed to be up on. But hold on. I'm going to look at the bottom of the card to get power and toughness because yeah. that's traditionally where power and toughness is. It's at the lower right, right of the card. And but it's, it's not. It's going to be on the top card, yeah. even though the yeah. bottom card has the ability still. And I'm like, this is really, it's really kind of confusing. It was very confusing. And I think it's going to be a situation for me that it's like, I'm going to block a creature that, that has a 6-6 six, six in the lower right. But it's going to be an, it's going to be an 8-8 eight, eight or something. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, oh, I guess my guy just dies. Yeah. I thought it was an 0-3, my bad. It's going to be a very similar situation to Planeswalkers that have static abilities. Yeah. Like, yeah. I tried to make my opponent sacrifice their Tamiyo with an Angress Rampage the other day because I Ooh. still forget that Tamiyo's static mm -hmm. ability is that they can't sacrifice yeah. it. So I'm like, cool. Well, I was playing that, that, that Planeswalker deck, and it's all three mana walkers. So throughout the whole, the last two historic things I was running, I had people trying to draw extra cards on my turn with Narset out. I had people, you know what I'm saying? Like I, yeah. I so I ran through that in the past Right, few days. that's the thing. Like I because because here's the thing. These are regular cards that they're introducing that fundamentally change what those cards do. Right. Like with Mutate, no longer is the lower right 
where you want to look at power and toughness, the upper lower right is where you want yeah. to look at power. For Planeswalkers, no longer is it just a creature with uh, just a, a card with abilities. Now it's a card with a, a, an always-on ability. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's hard to get used to these, even even over, like, a, a little bit of time. Uh, yep. JT said, does it have to do with your decline and caring about Constructed as much? No, not really. Because I'm actually Thanks. really excited about brewing with this set. I just... I just want to wait till I can process it all at once rather than like, because I'd have to dedicate like an hour a day to look at all the new cards that come out. And it's just a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't even begun to put any decks together or nothing like that. I've just on Twitter, I've seen what people have built and I look at them and I feel like there's uh, a couple of cards that just seem stupid good. Uh, but I haven't even built anything yet. So I really just want to play like either a band deck or a salt deck in this format. I just want to play like blue okay. green and, and blue green X cards. There's probably but enough good cards to support I, it. You know, I colors. bet there are. I bet there yeah, are. You absolutely. want to get started? You want to start with yeah, this Blade Banish? Let's go. Four mana, instant exile a creature with power four. This is just next snap, but with an exile clause instead of a destroy clause. Yep. So if you exile a mutated card, you get the whole thing. Really? Yes. If you exile a mutated creature. I... Do you? I think so. Can someone I, confirm? <laughs> I know if you exile it while it's on the stack. It's like if I try already. to mutate, if I try to mutate it onto a creature, and I exile the creature that I'm mutating it onto, it just comes into it play, like beats. bestow, right? Right. But if there's like, yeah, but I think if it resolves, then you get to exile the whole thing, which is weird. But I think it incentivizes you. You'll still get the, the ETB trigger. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I don't know why anyone would ever just do it on the stack. I would just wait for it to resolve and then get then two for one. Yeah. I feel like this. We're off to a bad start. No, it's fine. We're figuring out now. Yeah. Either way, this card is not... Uh, Somebody in chat linked the gatherer text. Ain't nobody, got time. ain't nobody got time for that. Here's the... Alright, so Blade Banish, it's fine. You'll play it unlimited. You're not going to play any Constructed. Yep. Oh, and just because someone's going to ask, these, these set reviews are geared more towards Constructed, but if the card doesn't have any application in, in Constructed, we usually just... We'll talk about the limited application. Correct. Like this one right now, Checkpoint Officer. It's not going to see playing Constructed, but it's probably fine and limited. Like it's a 1-2 two for 2, taps a creature... It's a very it's a classic useful ability. The adventure nope. one is just better, right? The one mana guy that can kill a creature if you yeah, cast the, it for its the, the rare that's constructed yeah. playable is definitely better. Correct. Yep. I agree with you. Is that First sarcasm? No. Oh, okay. I mean, the way I presented it was sarcasm. Like, okay. yes, Rob, obviously. But Not the agreement me. wasn't. I genuinely agreed with you. Oh, I appreciate that. First time catching your set review live, been a fan for a while, kid. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, coordinated charge. Five mana creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Again, this is... Like, there's going to be a lot of... As with most sets, there's always going to be a lot of, like, um, filler, right? Like, this is just a filler card. It's just this variation on the card with cycling because the set has cycling. So... Oh, I keep hitting the wrong button. Cub Warden. Four mana... Oh, here's our first rare with Mutate. Four mana for a 3-5 with lifelink. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, create two one one cat creature tokens with lifelink. So that's the thing. You can kill it in response, and they get this anyway. So they're still gonna get the three five, uh, or you can let it mutate, which means they do get two tokens. So they're they're trying to incentivize that the the, the ability resolves the whenever this mutate ability resolves, right? So you're saying if I have this mutated on another dude, uh -huh. let's say that's what you're doing, and then I allow this the mutate ability to respond or to Resolve. resolve right and if i kill the creature after resolve in response to your trigger that's on the stack or whether the trigger resolves or not right. the whole thing goes away that's that's what i'm that's what i'm believing yeah i guess that would make sense because if i've mutated three times and you kill it and i get two creatures still that seems a little op so you're okay. probably right so wait what if we, we go to mutate this right and this says whenever this creature mutates that ability is on the stack correct i kill it they do they still get the tokens I believe so because the trigger occurred because it already mutated. Oh, yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's yeah. not like, hey, this is going to mutate and then you get these. No, it's, it's correct. Yeah. It triggered because they mutated. You're right. You're right. Yep. Okay. Decent do we, card. Do it's we basically like... what? 2 1 1 lifelinks for, for four mana? Thank I mean, even a 3 5 lifelinker for four is still just fine. Like, sure. I don't hate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. Here's the thing, though. Like, if we put this on, let's say we have a, eh. so here's the thing. Like if you have a, mutate's really hard to wrap my head around, right? If I have a 5-5, five, five, I'm basically paying four mana to give it lifelink and make two one ones. Yes. Because you're never going to use this as power and toughness. You're going to keep the power and toughness. Of the larger dude. Right. So it's basically an enchantment 
that's a that gives lifelink and makes two one ones, right? Basically, yeah. Does that sound correct? That's the way I would look at it. And Chad is Chad is saying that they do not get the tokens. The mutation doesn't happen till it resolves. Right. But so what happens is if we're understanding this right, responding to Matthew and Chad. So when I use the mutate ability, we're saying that we allow that mutate ability to occur yeah, the card is resolved the card is on top of the other card that's resolved Correct. and now the trigger is happening yeah he doesn't it's have a creature in, in on the battlefield and he goes i would like to mutate cub warden and i go in response i will doom blade your your creature we're saying we allow the mutate ability to occur uh, yeah I th i'm pretty sure the mutate trips. has happened yeah right? okay yeah. But again, like it's weird. Like if you have a one one and you put this on there, that's fine because you're just playing your three five. It's basically like it's kind of like evolve in that. Not evolve, but uh, is it evolve? What's the one with um, the one with like Sidisi? What does Sidisi have? Sidisi Brew Tyrant? No, no, no. Sidisi the the mono black one that lets you tutor for something. Oh, um, what's that ability called? Where you have to sacrifice a creature? Correct. Yes. Exploit. I can't remember what it's called. Exploit. That's it, yeah, yeah. This is this is kind of like exploit. Where like if I have a one one. I'm essentially sacrificing my 1-1, one, one, making it a 3-5 with lifelink and then making two 1-1s. One, and That's it just says whenever you sacrifice that creature, you know, you make two 1-1s, one, right? Yeah. It's weird because the mutate ability kind of feels like that. Only in certain situations you're able to uh, substitute this that, it, that creature's power and toughness instead of this one. It's just wild to me that there's so many cards with this ability in this set and all the rare, you know, s such a high percentage of the rares and stuff are pushed with this ability. And it's just, it fundamentally changes the way that we play magic because it's everything ability. is gearing towards like Voltron style. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh it's yeah. It's so sure. different. So. But I mean, let's say the same could be said of like bestow, but like it's, it's, yeah, it's very much, it's, it's kind of like a, a hybrid of bestow and exploit. That's my, that's my impression of it. I agree with that. But the thing about bestow for me was, I don't think there were, there were as many bestow rares as we have with mutate. Like I feel uh, like. Chromanticore, Rob. <laughs> Unbelievable. This guy. Show some respect, Rob. Put some respect on Chromanticore's name. I have zero respect for Chromanticore. Wow. Unless it's with the soul flare. Yeah. Well, it usually is. Come on. Let's be real. Let's go to the next card. Day Squad Marshal, not to be confused with Night Squad Marshal. That's upcoming. Four mana for a three three. Okay, well you're thank probably you. we're probably priced out of standard already. CJ Willie, thank you for the sub. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Jester Poo also saw your sub. Bulamog also saw your sub. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate all of you. When this guy enters the battlefield, create a one one white human. Okay, so it's just four. It's this is literally just Ambassador Oak, right? But human, a human Ambassador Oak. This is just Ambassador Human. I mean, I don't, I don't think, I think there's better options. I don't think this is playable. You know, Ambassador Oak, it, It's right? cool. No. Really? I feel it's like you a, made that up. It's a 3-3 three, three tree folk that makes a 1-1 one, one elf when it comes into play. It makes an elf? That's cute. Yeah, it's from Lorem. It's a tree. Yeah, it's an oak. Sweet. Sweet. It should make a, a, a twig. A 1-1 one, one twig stick. <laughs> twig stick. <laughs> it can't attack or block. It just kind of sits there. <laughs> it just snaps. <laughs> it just snaps. But a uh, 1-1 one, one twig stick that can't attack or block. Thank you can you. sacrifice it. You get nothing out of it, though. <laughs> Divine sacrifice arrow. Sacrifice make a fire. Okay, so uh, Gideon's Gideon's Reproach, two mana. Define, uh, Gideon's Reproach deals four damage to an attacking or blocking creature. Same card. Yep. It's the same exact card. Yep. It's never going to see standard play because there's always a better option. Yep. There's always a... What's that What's that saying? There's always a, a bigger... Monster. I don't know what the, I don't know what the, I don't know what the official plug? saying is. Dranith Healer, two mana. What if we What if we change the... This is going to be a really like behind-the-scenes thing. What if I change the... Um, the slide transition. What if I faded it? Let's see. Watch. Look, look at this. Wow. Is that better? I can't it's tell. you, dude. Okay. It might be better. Dranith Healer. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you cycle a card, gain a life. And it cycles for one. This isn't terrible. I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to see constructive play, though, right? Like, I don't, I don't. I think that this is on the weaker end of the Cycling Matters cards. I don't think that... Um, this is something that becomes playable. If it was like a one three, I could maybe see it. If there's a cycling deck and mono red is prevalent, then it, you know it blocks well, and you can maybe gain some incident in life. But no, I don't think so. Yeah, you're like yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean it's just the two. But the problem is like the fact that it requires you to cycle is, is which is a thing you're not going to naturally do, but you're going to incrementally do it during a game. Uh, to, but whereas like if you're if it's like whatever you when you ever play a creature, like that's an ability that you're going to just do by itself. Right. You know I mean, like a soul yeah, no, type card. I don't think this is any good. Yeah. Dranith Magistrate. This is the default card that I've been using to like represent the set review. I just downloaded it. I just clicked it and 
And it also, someone was like, is, is that because Frank it's Sinar? You? That's exactly. That's <laughs> a... Is this because it's you? This almost looks like you and LSV. This looks like LSV's face, but with your hair and your facial hair. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. This card's very strong. This is like, Mike was really pissed at this card because he's like, <laughs> I fucking play commander, dude. I want my, I want this, I want to play, why is it, why did you make this? Because you just can't play your commander, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it seems, seems pretty good. I don't, is there a standard ap application I'm not seeing? This turns off all the ultimatums. How does that work? Why does it do that? If I, the ultimatum maybe allows you to cast cards, like the Jess guy one, I think lets you what? reveal the top five so. cards and cast them, I think. I mean, that doesn't turn off all of them though, right? Thank you. No. Oh, it turns off adventure creatures. That's interesting. Oh, adventure. Interesting. That's, that's yeah, a lot, that, man. Yeah, that makes us pretty good. The Mike Arnold, thank you for the resub. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I, this card just seems great. Like, this is just a hate. It's a typical hate bear. It's going to be very strong. It's not, like... There's one actually thing... There's one thing about this I actually really love that's kind of subtle. Is it's a 1-3. It's not meant to be an aggro card. The, what's the... Um, there's a new... I, there's an idol on they made in the last set. The one that made low... Um, yeah, the, pay, yeah. Pay, I don't, loyalty it's a, counts. It's a, it's a two one with first strike and planeswalkers cost one more loyal one more mana. Like if I'm a hate bear, don't give me the two one body. Just give me a one three. Let me let me you know let me back up and I say don't, hey. All, you guys I also there. don't want to get crushed. Like you don't have to be playing two power creatures nonstop while you you're stopping me from doing my thing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the card's good. Fight yeah, as good. one, one mana. Choose one or both. You know whatever you want to do. A human you control gets one one and indestructible till end of turn. Or a non-human gets one one and gains indestructible. This is actually this is a good trick for one mana. This card seems very good to me. I mean, this, this is very good. depending on the aggressive deck, this could definitely see constructed play. Like you're yep. also like if they play Wrath of God or like you know Shelter the Sun, whatever, and you can save two guys with one card. Like that's very good. Yeah, this is really good. Um, I think that um, a lot of the white decks, obviously, there's a lot of humans in those decks, but they also play Venerated Loxodon. Uh, there are a lot of ways to to use both halves of this card. It seems very good. Oh yeah, because I'll save my elephant and I'll save my one of my humans. Yeah, this single handedly the value you is know, real, Katie. The value yeah, is if you real. got like a three three and your elephant on board, and you got like three other creatures on board, and they they go, okay, well, I got a raft. I got an and elephant if you on board. Slightest one, you keep seven power on board. You're like, okay, I'll attack you for seven. My bumper sticker says elephant on board. So, <laughs> so you're like, you're like, and your Prius. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's just <laughs> they're bigger on the inside. You know, it's like okay. it's like a Tardis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, flourishing fox, one mana for a one one. Whenever you cycle another card, put a one-one counter on Flourishing Fox. This is obviously like this is your your set's uh, thematic one-one for one, right? Like this is supposed to be the powerful above curve creature that like just grows exponentially because you're doing the set's core mechanic, you know? Yeah. Got to um, see a deck. Got to see a deck to, to determine if this is any good, though. My problem is that if you're spending each turn cycling, you're not committing bigger creatures to the board. You're not well, playing I a mean, two drop because you're cycling. You're not playing a three drop because you're cycling. Unless you go turn one fox, turn two fox, cycle. Then turn turn one cycle. And then the other thing we'll you got to remember is every every time you're cycling, you're you're with this card, you're enhancing your board, but you're also hitting your land drops because you're cycling. So you are climbing up the curve. Hitting land drops is probably one of my favorite things in Magic, and I think it's yeah. because it's so rare. You know what I mean? So yeah. I appreciate it more. You know, it's like <laughs> Christmas. It comes once a year, so you really appreciate it when it comes. You know? Yeah. It's just like. It's a it's an abusive relationship for the most part. That you have personally? Um I with 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 mana, with lands, yes. Okay. You know. Garrison Cat, one mana for a one one. When Garrison Cat dies, create a one one white human creature token. This is pretty uh not bad if there's there's an aristocrat style deck. I mean Right, like this is your this is just your haunted hunted witness. What's his name? Hunted Witness. Yep, yep. Is that his name? I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think there's flavor to this card. Like, why do you get a human when this thing dies? Maybe because it's his, it's his cat and he's pissed off. After much arguing, the soldiers decided to keep it on the grounds that it killed enough mice to count as an honorary monster slayer. Yeah, I think there. I think the human that you get is avenging the cat's death. Okay, that that's cool then. I'm good with it. Helica Glider. This is a Helica Glider right here. <laughs> this is sweet. Three mana for a two two. This is a nightmare squirrel if I ever saw one. <laughs> Helica Glider enters the battlefield with your choice of a flying counter or a first strike counter. This card, this card's great for limited. Wow, this is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, good. I don't know, I don't know the situation you'd ever choose first strike or flying, but you know, mm. when they right. have flyers and you're winning the race, and they're only one or two butts. 
And their flyers are all there. Have like a bunch of one two flyers. One two like, flyers. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, all right, I'll block with three of them. And you're like, uh, dang it. strategy. My squirrel. Huntmaster Liger. Four mana for a three four, uh, with mutate for three. Whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. So the first time you mutate it, your creatures get plus one plus one. It's not even this creature; it's other creatures, which is weird I, because I don't, that means yeah, I, don't, I don't like this card. I mean, it's an uncommon; like it's probably not yeah. going to be. I mean, granted, it's, probably strong it's a and three mana mutate, which is on the cheaper end of some of the mutates, but still, I don't think this is good enough. My problem is like if you have a one one, like you play a one one on turn one or two, you put this on it. Now you have a three four for three. But you did lose your 1-1. One, one. Like, you only have one creature now Weird, instead yeah. of two. That's true, actually, because the ability itself doesn't trigger for itself. So if I have a, one creature on board, this card's useless, other than a 4 Right, you want to have, like, a bunch of other creatures. Yeah. It's also, like, I mean, it's weird because I expect... I expect the mutate to add the two stats, not just have one. Yeah. Does that seem yeah. intuitive to you? No. Okay. Imposing Vantasaur. Six mana for a 3-6, so we're probably not interested. Vigilant Cycling 1. What a cutie. I like that dinosaurs are a natural part of magic now. That's an enjoyable mm -hmm. thing for me. Yeah. Keen Sight Mentor. When Keen Sight Mentor enters the battlefield, put a Vigilance counter on target non-human creature you control. Okay, so it just gives Vigilance. Put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control with Vigilance. I mean, the 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 counter abilities are sweet. I, I'm happy that they came out with that, that in the set to where I can give anything I have vigilance and not just him. Uh, see, I feel differently actually. I really? feel like the counter abilities in, make uh, they make it so there's a lot of tracking in the game now. Sure. Like, uh, if you don't have the counters that specifically come with this set, which I don't even know where I'll get them to be quite honest. If I can't go to like Etsy releases and stuff, right? But like, 3D printed. Like, it's hard to be like, is this a flying counter? Is this a first strike counter? Is this a... I don't know. I can't tell. No, idiot. The blue one's flying counter. Right, exactly. Like, that's what I mean. Like, I feel like that's going to come up a lot where people just aren't going to know what the counters are unless you can, like, reference previous... Like, okay, well, hold on. It was from this, so it's a vigilance counter. There's just, like... Like, it's just too much to track. It's too much tracking. I just... Uh, <laughs> because you said that you didn't like it, I was like, okay, what possible scenarios would Frank not like this kind of stuff? And I was like... I could see a situation where you're playing cube and you're like, oh, I got this large 5-4 named so-and-so and my opponent casts one, but his has death touch because he cycled this card. Yeah, exactly. And now mine exactly. dies. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I just thought it was flying. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Screw me, I guess, because I didn't keep track of your blue diamond, your blue like your blue gem counter. I didn't know what your it was. Same, your same card as mine is better than mine. Thank you. And then I my opponent's going to be like, well, you know, I can't really let you take it back. And I'm like, of course you can't in our friendly cube draft. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then I'm going to take my cards and leave. Um, yeah, it's just a lot to track. Like, I mean, that's the thing. Like if I did put this in like a cube or something, not this specific one, but if I did put a, a card that had counters in the cube, I would make sure I, I probably only use one that would like make a flying so that like, I don't have to keep like four different types of specific yeah. counters in my cube, you know? Yeah. Arena state of the game article came out. Human drafts start on Thursday. That's so soon, dude. So Wait, human drafts start on Thursday, which is what the sixteenth. The pre-release is on the twenty-fourth of May in Japan in in a APAC. Hold on. And then the set's not even released in the U.S. until like April. May. It's May something. May like May fourth or something. May like it's so what? Why why are human drafts like three weeks before the pre-release? Like what? <laughs> I don't understand any of this, man. It's just so weird. Well, because they're ge because you don't have the means to go out and buy them from the store, so but they're giving it to you to electronically. Do it three weeks early. Well, no, it was scheduled for now. They postponed it because of it. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. set, the set, the set was supposed. The set always comes out a week after. It comes out. It comes the weekend after the pre-release week on MTGA. I don't consider it greed when they need to stay. Like, I mean, Wizards is going to lose so much business from not having pre-releases. Game stores are going to have. Like, I don't consider that greed. Like, I, I think I don't think there is a. I don't think there. I don't think it's mutually exclusive that if it's a business making money. It's greed. Like, that doesn't... It's just... A, I mean, they're just... I, it just seems weird. Like, the timing seems weird. I don't... Like, I feel like there's just a lot of changes, but whatever. Lava Brink Venturer. Three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. As it enters the battlefield, choose odd or even. Zero is even. Mm. Lava Brink Venturer has protection from each converted mana cost of the chosen value. This is interesting. It's a sweet card. It's also a human. Like, I mean, like, that's, that's a relevant creature type. 
Yeah, no, it's a sweet card to me because you have those companion decks that say you can only have even cards. You can only have odd. This could this could be a sideboard card in a mono white deck or a, an aggro or a white aggro deck. Production was delayed due to COVID, so it got pushed back. Oh, well then. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate the the input. Um, yeah, this card seems great because you could also, I mean, like based on your opponent's, um, like this is great against like a Nissa deck where you say I'm going to say even. And then, like, I can lands just can't block, block your it. lands. You right. can block all their lands. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's... This, actually, it's funny kind of reading it now, because if you think about it, against a deck that plays all evens, like one of the companions, this is just a, a true name. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, you can't... You can never block it. Uh, yeah. You can never... I can never... You, all my guy. I can block all your things. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's it's funny. pretty good. Also, yeah, you can name three. You can name Odd with Teferi, and then, like, they can never blounce it. Like, yeah, it's, this card's good. I think this card seems sweet. I like this card. It's definitely a nice addition to like a human, a human or a soldier strategy. So, and yeah. it's just like you're always going to be able to choose. Like if oh, I know they have lightning strike or I know they have path to exile, so you can choose accordingly based on the removal your your opponent might have. Yeah. Oh, are we should we should be writing these down? Was that the first one? Uh, I think that was the the only one that mattered. I don't think we liked the rare cat, the three five. I didn't think it was any good. It was really. All right. I wasn't excited about it. Light of Hope. Choose one for one mana. You gain four life. Destroy an enchantment or put a one encounter on target creature. If this said choose two, I think it's actually very playable. Really? But actually, dude, this card's this card's totally playable. It's, and still, I... it's still good. It's just a, it's just a it's just a what's a cleanse erasure cleanse. What's the one mana card that destroys and exiles an enchantment? Demystify. There's another one, right? Probably. Hmm. No, it's one mana. Ex it's one mana exile. Oh, oh de no, Demystify doesn't exile. Right. Cleanse. It's cleanse. Erase. Okay. Erase is it. Thank you. Erase. That's it. Erase, yeah, this yeah. is just... I didn't... So this I, card's really good. Yeah, before... You're right. You're right. I, I Before the enchantment... So here's the thing. If you took Destroy Enchantment, both gaining four life and putting a 1-1 one -one counter on a creature are pretty unimpressive, like, for one mana. Like, but it, because Destroy Enchantment is, is so versatile, this card's actually phenomenal. Yeah. yeah I, I like I, when I when I thought it should call... When, you, when I thought you should choose two, I was like, I hadn't processed Destroy Target Enchantment yet. Yeah. Also, um, we forgot the, uh, I don't know what it was called, but it was the one mana instant there. A human gets indestructible and a non-human gets plus one, plus, plus one. That is that good, yeah. Choose, I'll, I'll write it as choose both and then I'll come back and add the name. Sure. Luminous Brood Moth, otherwise known as Mothra and the uh, the Godzilla the Godzilla alternate art, which I'm huge fan of. If you guys get any Godzilla alternate arts and want to send them my way, I will gladly trade or buy them from you. Uh, if you guys have good rates... Or if you want to just send them to me, you could do that too. Just just get a hold of me at frank at franklaporte.com. <laughs> I'm really excited about these these alternate arts. Uh, uh, four mana for a three four. What's it? What's, why is that funny? Why is that funny, Rob? Mark, thanks so much for reading somebody. Why is that funny to you? <laughs> this card's good. Okay. Uh, by the way, I, I love those. I'm not. I don't care about Godzilla. I don't care about that stuff. But I think it's I think cool that cool, they give you a them. choice. And I think that that's that's cool for people. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like people are like well, this is just a cash. I'm like. I want to make it clear no, one more choice. time, guys. I don't care when companies I love make cash grabs that are completely optional to pick up. Exactly. If this company that I love is going to make an extra hundred thousand to million dollars from a product they produce, and that allows them to keep making a product that I love, please do all the cash grabs you would like. Like if you wanted to play this card, and the only way to get it was by buying a specific deck that you, a pre-con deck, and that's it only came a, with see, one. See, that's less okay. Yeah. Right. Like this is why I don't like, however, the buy a box promos. Like Nexus of Fate. The only yes. way to get that card is by either buying on a secondary market or um, buying a box. Buying a box. <laughs> right. Uh, whenever a creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its control with a flying counter. This reminds me of Nightmare Shepherd. Yeah. Same thing, I, right? I mean, it's a three-four instead well, of a four-four. Right, because the creature is not only not only do you not exile the creature, which is very relevant in a lot of situations. Yeah. Um, it also isn't a one one. It's just a bigger version of the creature it was, and it gains flying, which is why this is a mythic, and uh, and it should be. And Nightmare Shepherd was like a rare. It was a rare. Yeah. This this card is. There's obvious ways that this card can be broken for infinite loops. Yeah, this card's uh, fantastic. Like it's yeah. actually like the the thing is like, okay, so not only does it resurrect every creature you have it gives it flying like which is just like it, it enhances it yeah oh, most of the time to remove it it's what? back 
I said, oh, you spent your spell to remove my my biggest threat. It's back, yeah. and it's 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 worse than it was before. The one downside of this is, A, it does not do it by itself. It, 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 you know, obviously it says, because it does say whenever a creature you control without flying dies. So if, you, if they go to kill this, and at instant speed you can remove its flying, it would come back, right? Because uh, it doesn't say possible. when... It, Thank you! What? You're saying on this card itself? Right, because it doesn't say when another creature you control without flying die. It, like, so I assume like if this if they go to Doomblade this and you have a card that says you know target creature loses flying loses its abilities. I didn't right, think about this that. would come back, right? Interesting. Um, so that is the one downside that it, it won't do it for itself. And also like if you do have like a Bane Slayer Angel and they kill it, then it just dies because it does have flying. This only this only triggers the creatures without flying. But yeah. like also obviously you just don't put that in your deck and you make your whole deck non flyers and this card is just fucking this is just bonkers. Yeah. Oh, someone in chat said that you can equip the hammer to it. That's true. The hammer takes away. Oh, it loses flying. Yeah, because it's funny. so big. Yeah. And they're like, oh god, now I have to kill it twice. And then I'm like, well, I'll just equip the hammer after you kill it the first time. So <laughs> you'll have to kill it forever. Let me tap ten. Yeah, th this card is great. It's it's a really strong, it's a really strong gentle bird. It's busted. It's pretty busted. Majestic Oricorn. Wow. I had some Oricorn on the cob last night. How delicious. did that taste? I said it was delicious, Rob. Sorry. I was talking. I couldn't hear you at the same time. I know. Five <laughs> mana for a 4-4 four, four with Vigilance. Whenever it mutates, you gain four life. Like, the again, like, I, we're, I, I feel like I'm personally processing and evaluating mutate as we go, right? And, like, basically mutate abilities say if you have a creature, you can trade that creature in for whatever this mutate trigger is, right? Like, if you have a 2-2 two -two on board, you're basically saying, like, I can essentially get rid of that 2-2, two -two, you know, put this on top of it to gain and save one life. mana. Well, it's a, yeah, right. It gives you a discount. It's So it's also like, um, what's that other ability on the Eldrazi's? Like Wretched Griff and... Uh, Wretched Griff? The friggin', the friggin' Eldrazi ability where you like, where you sacrifice, emerge, emerge. Oh, emerge, right? yeah. Yeah, like you're kind of sacrificing the creature. For all intents and purposes, you're getting rid of the creature underneath, right? No, you're basically Unless... sac you're sacrificing a creature right. to pay four mana to have a 4-4 four, four Vigilance that just gained you life, basically. Instead of paying five for a 4-4 four, four Vigilance. Last God, I just tack on and sack a creature to every mutated ability. That's what it feels like, right? Because the creature on the bottom, unless it has abilities that you're still going to use, which a lot of times they probably won't because you're not going to like risk the two for one, I don't think, you know? Yeah. So you're well, going to put it on like not. a worse creature, like a 1-1. One, one. If I have a 1-1, one, one, I'll get rid of my 1-1 one, one to gain 4 life, right? Like, that's basically what I'm doing. It keeps its abilities, though. Mm -hmm. The bottom, you don't lose your creature's abilities. But that's what I'm bottom. saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, unless it has abilities, you're basically just throwing away the bottom creature. Oh, uh, right, correct. Right? Okay, yeah. I'm with you there. So it's interesting. So you got to really base, like, is the bottom creature worth getting rid of, in quotes, to do the mutate ability, right? Like, to gain 4 life. Yeah. Because a lot of times that's what's going to be the case, I think. I don't think this is playable. Next. Okay. <laughs> manned? Ma manned? Manned? It's a manned, mate. It's a manned. I think it's maned. Maned. That makes so much more sense because it's a cat. Thank you. I've never seen the word maned before written out. That's very... I don't think it's a word. It's got to like be a word, right? Like maned. To be maned. It could just be a name. Play it as a main. <laughs> Play it as a main. <laughs> I mean, he said man, but that's still funny. Man, main, that's so hard to do. It's so hard to process because it just looked like man. Like, oh, well, if you, you know what? We're just going to move on. It's a one fourth vigilance for two. The rate's good. One four for yeah, two is one, fine. One four, it, it attacks and blocks. It, it protects. It protect. Protect. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> if you're going to say it, it attack, don't say it block. Like, that's not how, this, <laughs> that's not how it goes. It block. This is actually Mythos of Snapdax is actually a cycle of Seb Kinnon cards. Um, and all the arts are pretty sweet because they look like cave paintings. Uh, so four mana, and they also, they're all connected to their respective clans, let's say. So Mardu, Jeskai, Teemer, etc. Yeah. They all have a trigger if you use all three abilities. Uh, each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the non-land permanents and control, then sacrifices the rest. So cataclysmic gear hulk effect, basically. I this try to put it in sweet. context of cards that we've already processed. That's, that's, that's one thing I like to do. This card's really sweet. Uh, if you spend a black and a red, so basically the casting cost would be black, red, white, white, which is pretty tricky. Um, you cho you choose the permanents for each player instead. Yeah, that seems good. 
Do I have to Seb choose? It doesn't Seb say up to. Seb is unreal. Seb McKinnon's art is unreal. So if you guys haven't done so, check out Seb McKinnon's entire catalog. It's, his stuff is just absolutely ridiculous. So I have to choose. So if you have one Planeswalker and I cast this for Mardu Colors, I have to choose that Planeswalker and you have to keep it. Yes. So this is kind of like a buffed up version of Single Combat, which we already have. Or Cataclysmic Gearhawk. Or Cataclysmic Gearhawk. Which I said, yeah. Like, I mean, it's a card that makes you choose one of each permanent, you sack the rest. Like, it's very common. It's a very common trope in Magic, whereas, like, you know. Ah. That's what I mean. Like, because, like, there's oh. so, like, there's very few times, like, my opponents have more. Like, okay, if you have two or three Planeswalkers, cool, I get rid of one. But, like, yeah. a lot of times, like, there's the, there's the standard format right now is, like, you have one creature. You have, I'll I have, I have one arrow. Nessa. I have a three three land, you know. Yeah. I, I have no enchantments. Like whatever. Yeah, this is this is tough. Okay, we're gonna go to the next one. I'm not gonna write it down. I don't think it's for four no, mana, especially so. because like it's such a specific mana cost to like get the the kick the kicker. And it's like whatever. Pacifism. This is a good one. Two mana enchanted creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. But that's insane for two mana, dude. It what is. a deal, dude. Dude, the power creep is real. This is gonna be a standard staple. This, this, this for two mana. It's a common. Like power this is gonna creep. be in every white deck. Like, if you guys have not, you, buy them now. Just pick them up now. Pick them pick up. Pick them up now. We've never. Oh, seen, I don't if think you're somebody this is, who likes old art, you can actually get it. You know, from many years ago too. So this, Kerwin's like reprint. <laughs> I don't think so, man. I've never seen this card before. It's weird because like Path of Exile costs Path of Exile costs one, but it gives them a land. Like this doesn't even give this them a is land. Just better. Yeah, this is just better. Like you don't even get a land out of this, so yeah, it's this like. Is better. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay. Patag Patagia. <laughs> Tiger five mana for a three four cat. God, these fucking cat. These 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 animals are out of control, man. Yeah. When this enters the battlefield, a human you control gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Not playable. We've even seen if it had flash, before. it might not be We've playable. Seen this before. There was a dinosaur that did this. Was it? Patagia. I like okay. Patagia. Patagia. Okay. Perimeter Sergeant. Three mana for a 3-2. Whenever it attacks, other humans you control get plus one, plus one. Oh. That's actually that's a, not terrible. Yeah, this is not bad. We're, we're seeing a lot of humans here. I mean, if there's like a token deck with a bunch of humans, like this is just a fine, this is a fine dude. Whatever. This is a fine dude. This is a very I mean, fine dude. Yeah, every turn you're getting a... I mean, he doesn't look like he's doing anything other than like, hey, look at my friend who's <laughs> fighting dying. this cat. I mean, I, I would love to help, but... I gotta do this interview. <laughs> look at me! Look at me! He's, I got to do this he's, interview. he's clearly getting interviewed by a by an they're Ikoria like, reporter here. Yeah, they're like, which which guy are you telling us to look at? And he's going, him. like, why? Yeah, why is he holding the sword like this? Like, pan, hey man, pan, listen. Pan to that guy. Are you sure you're Watch the sergeant this. here, sir? <laughs> we're not very confident in your sergeant sergeantly abilities here. I'm I'm sorry. Sanctuary Lockdown. Three mana. Humans you control get plus one, plus one. Okay. Um, it. It's an anthem for three. Sure. Uh, two and, a t and tap two untap humans. Tap target creature and opponent. This is not bad. Especially if there's a lot of vigilance in the set. Like, you're just like, I'll go to combat. Yeah. Attack with all these guys. Tap your two. Uh, tap your two. Tap your dream trawler and something else, dream right? Dream trawler, yes. Like, love, obviously, love, that's the one thing we're thinking of. I love diddling dream trawlers. I'm sorry, did you say diddling? Yeah, diddling. Eh, it's gonna be not demonetized. Get that out on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> well, you guys heard it here first, guys. Rob is a diddler. Diddle your dream troll. I think this card's good. This card is just as good as any other anthem. Uh, like always watching was a rare. It was harder to cast. Oh, the card was so good. You know, but like this is still humans get plus one plus one, and you can tap creatures. Like this card's actually very good. What did always watching do? Oh, it gave him vigilance. Plus yeah. one plus one vigilance, right? Yeah. I'm I'm writing this down. What was the other one? There was the the one from um Rip Captain. What? No, no. I don't. Mm, I don't know if I'm gonna write that down. Maybe I true. would. You're, okay. you're writing down a human-specific anthem. Okay, I wrote it down. My, my only concern with Perimeter Captain is his own stats aren't aren't the best, but it's still it's fine. a three-two for three that buffs other. That's okay, a tribal you to, buff. You're getting real aggressive right now. It's a three-two for three. Okay, that's softer. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay, so the, here's um. What was I gonna say? I was going to say, what was the one from uh, from Ixalan that did, like, vampires? It was, like, uh, I forgot. It was, like, plus two. It was plus one, plus one. Legion's Lieutenant. No, the, the actual enchantment that cost three mana. Uh, It was white. It, you're you're doing good. You're doing good. I'm going to go to the next card I can't card remember now. what it was called, but I know what you're talking about. 
Savai Sabertooth. Three one for two. God, this card is in every set now. Skip it. It wasn't always watching Super Fritz. That was from like Shadows of Ernest Broad or something. <laughs> I'm talking about the Ixalan one that people played in the Vampire deck. And like it had Ascendance. It had like City's Blessing. <laughs> uh, okay, so my Sabretooth, sure. I'm going to keep going. Snare Tactician. Two, three for three. When you cycle a card, tap a creature and opponent controls. Not terrible. It's still a no. three mana card. Like there's a lot of three mana cards in this set. We've seen Perimeter Captain. We've seen Snare Tactician. We've seen... Um, the the lava bring venturer there's a lot of three mana white creatures in this set or white humans rather radiant destiny was the card that you were there talking it is. About. nailed it thanks chat it wasn't Love just vamps but it was just vamps come on everybody knows it was just vamps ain't nobody playing radiant destiny and buffing any other creature type of vampires <laughs> solid footing one mana flash enchant creature it gets plus one plus one as long as this creature has vigilance it assigns combat to see because it seems like there's a vigilant theme in this set for sanctuary lockdown in white, it assigns least. combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Oh, it's for it's a butt strategy. It's a butt it's, strategy. It's keeping track of your butts. Yep. I don't think this is any good. It's not. Yep. Nope. Splendor Mare. This dude is this dude is not mained. Just to be clear, uh, three mana for it. Was be able to look past his his glowing those antlers. antlers are, are those are banging, dude. Those are bangers. All right, so we got three mana for a three three. Cycling two with life. This card seems good. Three three lifelink for three with cycling two. When you cycle it, put a lifelink counter on a, on a creature forever. Like they just get lifelink forever. This card's good. Yeah. I would play this in the against the red deck every day. And if I'm not playing against the red deck, I'll cycle it, man. If I need a three three with lifelink, I'll play it. If not, you just turn it into something else. You throw it in the garbage can. Don't. That's that's hard. That's hurtful. Okay. Don't. I hope Pete is not watching. You know what? Go go back real quick. I'm going back. Whenever you cycle Splendor, I put a lifelink counter on target. Nope. That's nope. Go oh, back. sorry. My bad. On target. Okay. It said you control. I was going to say, what happens if you cycle these and you don't have a creature? Uh, you it, it you put it on their Phantasmal Image and kill it. Oh. <laughs> no, I think Magic tries to avoid that. It doesn't want you to have feel bad moments where like, like Ravenous Chupacabra now. It says, oh, opponent's creature. Whereas back in the day, you'd have to kill your own guy. Flame Tongue Kavu didn't give a fuck. If there were no other creatures <laughs> on the board, Flame Tongue Kavu killed himself. That dude, that dude seppuku'd himself if there were no other creatures on the board. He was like, guess I'll die. It was the meme where he's like, guess I'll die. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, so Magic is trying to avoid feel bad moments like that where like, if there's no, I can still play my 2-2. What about when your opponent plays Teferi? How do they are they trying to avoid that? Three mana Teferi? No, they don't give a fuck about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. Okay. Spontaneous flight. Three. I mean, I feel like if it's spontaneous, it's going to cost less than three mana. Yeah. That feels like it's going to take a while. This three. is an investment in flight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a much better name. Investment, investment in flight. flight. <laughs> Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Put a fly Putting a flying counter on it is actually a big game, though. Like... The difference between these cards not giving it until end of turn and actually just giving it forever is really a big deal. This sucks. Oh, I, if it cost one, I'd be in. I'd be on board for sure. Yeah, if dude. it was spontaneous, but it would be good. the problem is this is an investment in flight. We're not trying to invest in flight. <laughs> if I play three mana to give a do plus two plus two and flying, and you pay two mana to kill it, I've invested too poor. I've invested poorly. Yeah, that's a poor <laughs> investment. So. <laughs> We're having a good time already. This is nice. Stormwild Caprador. A bird goat. Because why not? Because why not? It's 2020, man. Coronavirus is flourishing. You know, <laughs> we, why not a bird goat, right? One three for three with flying. Another three mana. Th this whole set is three mana cards, dude. Look, the last three cards all have the same exact casting cost. I've been looking at the butts, too. To see. I bet, uh, I bet you have, buddy. I've been. <laughs> I bet you have. <laughs> if non-combat damage would be dealt to a to, to Stormwind Caprador, prevent that damage. Put a one-one counter on Stormwind Caprador for each. You know what I don't like? I don't like when cards refer to themselves by their name, which is what they do. That's like that's just how magic works. I wish it said this because I actually think this is more confusing for players. Because if I have two of these, I'm gonna assume that when storm when damage is dealt to one of them, it, put, it puts counters on both of them. That makes sense. You know, I think it's I think it's more confusing this way. Three CMC is the best. That's how they make lots. Uh, Katie, I would disagree with you because Cryptic Command costs four CMC. Mm. So. I think that they're doing this with so many threes because they realize how good our Boreal Grazer was. They want you to just ramp right into it? Yeah, you want to be dropping these hardcore threes on yeah, two. Yeah, I can't, I can't argue with that, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, 
Prevent hey, are that you damage. Pointing, put it are you pointing counter. your lightning strike at this thing? Check ten. Flame Tongue Cabo didn't give a rainbows. <laughs> Rainbows is the word that replaces a curse word. So that is not what Check 10 actually said, oh. which makes it funnier. Yeah, the uh the the, the filter changes the he word. He said shit. He said shit. Or an F or a or an F. Oh, uh, he yeah. yeah, F. So wait, if oh, this is just non-combat damage, so I'm very disinterested now. I'm going to keep going. Yeah, that's weird. He's an oogler and a diddler? Wow, Bert. Wow. Is that about me? Yeah. You know what yeah. you did. Yeah. Swallow hole. This art's great. Uh, one mana, as initial cost to cast it, tap an untapped creature you control. Again, works plays nice with vigilance. You can oh no, you can't do this after combat sorcery. Never mind, it does not play nice with vigilance. Exile a tapped creature, put a one one counter on the creature tapped to pay this. So this is basically like the white this fatal push weird. in the sense that like you're kicking that dude into the pit. You know what I mean? This is weird. You're weird. This card looks like they threw three darts at the wall. And they came up with, as an additional cost, tap an untapped tap creature it. you control. All right, exile, exile dude, it. and put it's, a 1-1 one, one counter. Keep in mind, you got to exile a tapped creature. Yeah, this is Which is rough, sucks. because you can't be like, they can't attack. And then in response, you're like, all right, I'll exile your tapped creature. I'll yeah, tap my sorcery, guy. Yeah. Right, like, the sorcery part's rough. Rough. Is it bad, though? Yes, very. Is it? Yes. Sorcery? I think sorcery is the deal breaker for me. It's a deal breaker. If this was an instant, it would be good. I think it'd be good. It's just a seal away at that point. You know what? Right? If it was an instant and there was like an always watching style effect, if you if you were in like a, a white aggro deck, like a, a humans deck, I think it would be a rare if it was an instant. See, the thing about this card is that like it contradicts what you're doing. You obviously want a deck that has a bunch of creatures you can tap and put counters on. Like you want to put a counter on your creature, but yeah. like I want to be attacking with that creature, yeah. not tapping it to exile Shut your take guy. My money. So yep. Kerwood donated one dollar, rainbow. <laughs> 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 that means Kermit probably just cursed and uh, he's like I'm gonna test this out so there you go did you see what I just did I did the Spongebob pagination oh we did it at the same time <laughs> I love it Valiant Rescuer two mana for a 3-1 this is uncommon so I have higher expectations keep in mind this is the second one colorless one white 3-1 that we've seen so far yeah that's weird uh, whenever you and they both uh, this one's this guy's carrying I look like he was carrying the dinosaur carrying the over his shoulders yeah <laughs> No, that's not how it goes. Whenever you cycle another card for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 one, one human soldier. This is not bad. This is Forrest Gump. This card's good. This card's very good. It's a 3-1 for 2 that just you cycle a guy, you get a 1-1. One, one. I think it's good. Uh, yeah, you, so you draw a card and get a 1-1. One, one. This card's really good. Especially it, if you have and, multiple and it makes humans. And it's, and it's each turn, so you could do it on your turn and on their opponent's turn. It's correct. There's no limit. And if you play commander, you can do it on all of your opponent's turns. Oh, wow. I'll do it on your turn. I'll do it on yep. your turn. I'll do it on your turn. I'll do it on your turn. I'll do it and on And then my they turn. kill you. And then they're like, yeah, you got a lot of one ones, but I'm a combo this turn. So <laughs> that's cool. Um, The other thing about this card is like, again, it's like hero of precinct one. Like if you have two of them or three of them in play for some reason. Oh, that's like, busted. You get three one ones a turn. Like it's very, yeah, that's, this card's that's great. really good. And it's just like, it's on curve too. Three power for two mana is just fine. And, it's good. Looks looks like I'm building a human deck first. Vulpakeet, that's a fox bird. Oh man. <laughs> oh man, it's a vulpine and a and a parakeet. Uh two, three for four. With flying. Whenever this creature mutates, put a one one counter Thank on you. it. Alright. Mm, nah. Cool art though. Is it C Therio? See there, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. I kinda wanna say see the riot. Like I see the riot. But. I think it's, I think it's, oh, it probably is See the Riot, because the T is capital. But the R is not. Oh. Right? So, like. Then it's See Thoreau. That's, no. No. Is it See Thoreauit, like Detroit? I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the next card, because this one's not doing it for me. Is, are we on blue? Do you think, what, do you, do you know if, if the next card is blue, or if there's another card after V? What's your bet? I'm going to say this is the last I'm white free, card. I'm freezing right now. Okay. Blue. Oh, dang it. Will of the All Hunter. Two mana. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If it's blocking, instead put two plus one, plus one counters on it. It's garbage. Good. It's definitely a great trick in... It's great uh, limited. It's great limited. In limited, yeah. Jesus, that's a blowout. You're like, all right, I'll block your guy with my two, two. I'll put two counters on it. It's a four, four now forever. I'll kill you. Yeah. Yeah, it's real good. 
I wish I wish limited was the only thing that mattered though. No, I don't. That's not true. Rob, is there a live, laugh, love decoration on the wall? Absolutely not. And Kerwitz, <laughs> since we're in chat together, I will I will walk through my house to prove to you that I do not have one of those <laughs> decorations in my house. This is the first time that you've been in your house. Yeah, where we were streamed from. That's awesome. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever been in my house. Okay, so the cards in white that we looked at was the Choose Both card. I forgot the name. I'll write it down before it goes in the description. Lava Brink Venture, Light of Hope, Luminous Broodmoth, Perimeter Captain, Sanctuary Lockdown, Splendor Mare, and Valiant Rescuer. Those are the white cards that, that should have some sort of impact or, or, or at least look decent. Did you put Aegis the Turtle. Dude on it? The what? Perimeter Sergeant. Perimeter Captain? Is it Sergeant? Yeah. It's, Captain it's, was the old card. Yeah, Sergeant it's Sergeant, is isn't it? Yeah, we downgraded. Yeah. And that dude's just doing interviews. Yeah, he's like, look at this guy die. He's like, yeah, I'd love to answer your questions about the cat epidemic go. that's going on. Uh, Aegis Turtle, however, is not making any lists, unfortunately, as big of a turtle fan as I am. We'll see you next time, Aegis Turtle 05 for one. This is a strict upgrade to Kraken Hatchling. Uh, Correct. Don't forget. So if you guys are big Kraken Hatchling fans. Don't sleep. Aegis Turtle. guy, Don't sleep on Aegis Turtle, guys. <laughs> this turtle is so cute. It is a cutie. But you, Katie, let's be honest. Handles. That's all turtles, right? Like, anticipate a classic. Lo I love the art. I'm gonna write it down. Yeah, I mean, you, you should look at the top of the cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom. It's basically just the magic. At, at some point, magic said, "Let's let's reprint impulse," but four cards is a bit much. Let's make it three. Yeah, that's and that was good it's. enough, and that stuck forever. Yeah, and that's what we have now. And it's good enough. It's good enough. Is that Jace? Great. That is not Jace. That looks like a, a female. That looks like a, fem a feminine. Jace. Okay. Holy cow, what is this? This is, this is Archipelagor. Archipelagor. It's oh, like an Archipelago. It's, arch it's an Archipelago with gore. Oh. An Archipelago? I don't know how to pronounce it. Archipelago. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's Archipelago. Oh, is that Narset? I could see that being Narset. Oh, I think that's Narset. Okay. That's what I thought too. Who is this weird like Nicobolus? See this C Nicobolus. You know who that really looks like? Water bolus. Who's water bolus behind her? That looks like that looks like the uh, a blue colored version of the dragon from Dragon Ball Z. That's got the little it mustache. It does. Yeah. It does look. That's literally what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, okay, seven seven for seven. Whenever this creature, whenever this creature mutates, tap up to X target creatures where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their current controllers next. Okay, if I have a 1-1, one, one, I mean, you're always going to play this in limited. You're probably never going to play it in constructed, right? That's what it comes down to. 7-7, seven, seven, why not? If I... Why not in limited, you mean? Yeah. Okay, yeah, for sure. But, like, if I have a 1-1, one, one, I can pay 6, put this on top, which I'm basically emerging. I'm sacrificing my 1-1 one, one to pay this for less, to play this for, for a cheaper cost. Um, And then it's the first time it mutated, so I will just literally tap one dude. You just diddle one dude. We need we need Mutual to try and read this creature's name. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be great. Mike's at work right now. He's upstairs at work, so I'm gonna go to the next one. Archipelagor. I was just saying it. Sorry. Okay, I forgive you. <laughs> There's no hey, no apology needed, bro. Okay. Avian Oddity, four mana for a two four. Not to be confused, Space Oddity by David Bowie. Flying for a two four for four. When you cycle it, put a flying counter on target creature control. This yeah. is no nimble obstructionist. Which is like literally my bar for flying cycling creatures. Flying cyclers? Flyklers? Flyklers. <laughs> <laughs> or slings. I'm going to go to the next one. Boon of the Wishgiver. Six mana. Draw four cards. This is just upgraded hieroglyphic illumination, right? Well, I, don't, I wouldn't call it an upgrade. Draw four yeah. instead of two? Yeah, but it costs six. But the and cycling is one colorless instead of... Oh, it's a sorcery. I'm, 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 I'm if out. If that wasn't a sorcery, I think it becomes playable. I agree it, with it, you. It's a one-of. It's a one-of. Nope, not as a sorcery, it ain't. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm never... You're never going to... The deck you're playing, that is never going to spend six mana on their turn to play. They will play a... They will play a Garrick Huntmaster or Garrick Cursed Huntsman or whatever. They'll play a six mana Planeswalker every day. Yeah. Capture Sphere. Four mana... Flash and we we know Capture Sphere. This is like this is an old one. This is this art is making me all this this art is sad. That dude is trying to get his friend out. Uh when there's a battlefield tap an enchanted creature. Uh enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controllers on tap step. Are you okay? Don't if you're saying something, you're breaking up right now, so it this is Oh god, Rob is Rob's dead. 
Oh God, guys. I can hear you now. We're good. Now we're back. Okay, we okay. I unpaused, so now Rob is we're back. Good. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was just a minor hiccup. We got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. This is this is not this is limited. You're gonna play it in your. It's a, it's a great blue removal spell for especially with flash. Hey, hey. Uh. <laughs> He's a true comedian, ladies and gentlemen. A true comedian. <laughs> That's the, right, that's, the, that's the broadcasting equivalent of, like, if, if I'm trying to get in the car, I go to open the door, and he scoots up just a little bit. And I'm like, okay, real funny. And then I go to open the door again, and he scoots up just a little bit. It's low bar, but classic. <laughs> Con 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 the first one was real, though. The first one was real. Convolute. Three mana, counter target spell, unless it's controller. There was a time where I'm like, is he just fucking around? Because I know this is what you do. No, I wouldn't. No, no. Okay, so bad mana leak. We're going to keep going, right? Yeah, this is no good. Crustacean. That's a crystal crab. That's a crab with trees growing out of it, I guess. One six for four with flash. So what we have here, we have that the turtle, which is a 05 for one mana. For three more mana, it gets plus one, plus one in flash. Is that a good deal? No. It's terrible. This is very bad. Dream tail. I was going to say, for four mana, I'd rather have a 6-6 six, six that uh, gains me three life, draws me a card, uh, puts a land on the battlefield every turn. Do you know what else costs six mana? Or four what? mana? Questing what? Beast. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's a hell of a card. That, I don't know if you heard that, of this one. Can that crab block the Questing Beast? Guys, it cannot. It, ever. It cannot. In, any, in any realm. Okay, so Crustacean costs the same as Questing Beast. <laughs> I want you to think about that, guys. I want mm. you to really process those stats. Dream Tail Heron, 3, 4 for 5, your typical flying uh, stats. Whenever this creature mutates, draw a card. So again, like if I have a 1-1, one, one, a 1-1 one, one creature is going to be my barometer for most mutates because that's what I feel like Limited's going to have, right? You're going to have 1-1s one, and 2-2s. Two, two. If I have a 1-1 one, one out, I also think it might give 1-1s one, more value in Limited, right? Like you might play a couple of 1-1s one, because it allows you to just replace that 1-1 one, one in the late game with the Dream Tail Heron and draw a card, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't ever overlook anything that says draw a card. It can creature, block questing beast once. No, it can't, dude. It definitely no, it can't. Not even once. It's just like it's just like if you're trying to inject marijuanas. Not even once, guys. Not even once. <laughs> Don't inject marijuanas. Not even once. Um, yeah, this card's cool and limited. Like for four mana, like you get a three four flyer for four mana if you mutate it, and then you get to draw a card. So you know what? Actually, this is a this is a common. This seems like a very this this seems like a card that could be a somewhat high pick. In limited, actually, in draft. I agree. Well, because even on 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 its face, a three four flyer for five is already a high pick. It's that's, yeah, yeah, that's a traditionally you know good body in limited. Thanks. It's got a good body. Zimini Pot, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Welcome back. Set review for my two favorite people. Today is a good day, even if the puppy chewed up the new shoe. Oh, don't inject the marijuana. Don't do it. Not even once. The, the puppy loves you still. It's it's true. It had no idea. Don't punish him too. Don't punish them too too badly. Because they didn't mean it. They're just they're just dogs. They're just wonderful little dogs. Escape Protocol. This card is exciting. Two mana. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay one. When you do excellent on artifact or creature you control, then returns to the battlefield under its owner's control. This is like a modified astral slide, right? It costs one less mana. You can only target your own things. Right. But you can target an artifact. You can only diddle yourself. You can't diddle the opponent. Yeah, one of the strategies of Astro Slide was you can blink your opponent's creatures in combat so that you could just... It's like basically not... It's like tapping them, right? Like you're not taking damage. You're like, okay, you got a 4-4 four, four, and a 5-5. Five, five, I'll cycle two cards, blink them both. You know, draw two cards. Um, Again, this card could be excellent or it could just be meh. It could be a trap. I think this card's good. I think it there's definitely be. enough things for this card. Um, plus, being able to blink an artifact or a creature is just cool um you, one of the things i mentioned in my article last week actually on coolstuffing.com was that um this is nice when you're blinking like frilled mystics you know oh god or like the voracious great shark you know so like being able to blink your creatures that counter things when they come into play are, is, is pretty good so are we locking you into a, a week one escape protocol deck is your first deck an escape protocol deck i don't know i can't tell you <laughs> this is only the second card, right? It was anticipating this one, right? Those are the only two blue cards that actually... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go to the next one. Essence Scatter. Essence Scatter is a classic. Look at that Seb McKinnon art, man. His art is just... It's just so good. 
Ooh, I didn't think of that. Someone in chat said you can split your mutated creatures with that card. That's interesting. That is interesting. So if you put like three mutates, you could just be like cycle them. Three. <laughs> that's, I mean, like thematically, that seems very weird and painful. But God, I, I want this card. What essence scatter? This art's so sick. Yeah, Seth McKinnon's a friggin' master. He's such a. It's because his style is so varied and so unique. Like it's just unlike anything I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, we don't even have to talk. Essence scatter is a classic. It's gonna see play yep. in every standard format that it's legal in, 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 in at least some decks. Yep. Um, I actually think, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. I think Disdainful Stroke is one of the strongest cards in standard that people are not playing enough right now. You know what I mean? It's so funny you said that because every blue deck I've been running, I've run um, at least two strokes on my sideboard. And it just hasn't felt good enough, even when I was actually playing it. And I've been playing it for weeks uh, before I just switched to Historic a couple days ago. And it actually has felt not good enough, and I actually started removing it towards the end. Disdainful it seems, stroke? yes, it seems really good because it counters everything. It, like you're not going to counter the trigger, but it counters Hydroid Crisis, Nissa, Questing Beast. I'm with you. Like uh, it just, it just hasn't done enough for me. Like I'm already losing to the stuff that costs less than four mana, so I'm I can no longer wait to either hold up Disdainful Stroke because I have to deal with what's already there that I couldn't stroke. Because the cards at three mana can be so strong. Stroke and diddling and oogling, guys. It's yeah. not a. It's just not a family friendly. Oogling stream. did not come out of my 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 mouth. Yeah, maybe you're too busy stroking. Do you ever think about that? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. All right, we're gonna go to the next one. Yeah. Facet reader, one two for two. Draw a card, then discard a card. I mean, unlimited. I love this. I'm just gonna loot every day. But it's so funny how much like you can see like the difference in these cards where it's like looting. Let's make him. Let's make him pay mana for a loot. Loot's too good. Yeah. Okay. Frost links three mana for a two two. When enters battlefield, tap a creature. It doesn't untap. We, we've the seen reprint. it. We've seen this guy. Frost veil ambusher, five mana. Oh, ambush, not ambusher. It's not a. It's not a noun. It, well, it's a noun, but it's not a creature. Is what I'm saying. Uh, tap up to two target yeah. creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controllers next untap. Five mana for this. This card sucks. Yeah, I'm out, dude. It makes me angry because wow. there's a two mana card. There's a two mana card that yes. did the same thing. Feeling of dread taps two guys, then it taps two guys again. I mean, yeah. that's basically the same thing. I guess it cycles, so you could charge five for it. But that sucks. Good gravy, dude. I guess. I mean, like, the thing is, like, this is just worse than sleep. It's an instant. Yeah, it's just worse than sleep. Yeah. I mean, it costs one more than sleep. It is an instant, but it only hits two guys. You can cycle it. There's pros okay, and cons to both, but like five mana is still a lot. But neither this, of them are getting played anyway. I think so. this could have been four, and I think it'd be fine, but. Ugh, even at four. <sighs> I think four Th is better. Three makes it playable. Three makes it very playable, though. Yeah. Glimmer Bell, one, three for two. Flying, untap it. Yeah, that's cool. There's got to be something that you this can like uh, abuse blue that Blue Vigilance, guys. Blue Vigilance. Well, there's got to be a way to abuse that ability with a mutate. Something that produces mana, and then you get paid to untap it and gain mana off it. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Do I care enough? Yeah, I don't think so. Probably if we not. If we get to that, if we see it, if it exists, we'll we'll look back. But it like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gust of Wind, four mana. This spell costs two less if you control a creature with flying. There is actually a flying deck in standard right now. We played against it a couple times. And uh, return a non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. Draw a card. This card's very good. So typically this is a three mana spell, right? Like it's three oh, mana. It's there's no. Oh my god. Every card we like in this set is a sorcery, and then I like it so much oh. that I'm just like, oh. Moving on. That sucks. Yeah. I was actually excited for this. Man, no, it's a sorcery. Be. No, don't be. I'm going to keep moving, right? I, mean, I think yeah. it's still fine, right? Like in the flying deck, you bounce their blocker. You draw a card. We already have this card almost. We have a, the one with addendum, the three mana one. What's addendum? I mean, what's the Addendum what's the is card? where whenever you cast it during your main phase, you get the addendum ability, which oh, yeah, is draw yeah, a card. Right. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, because it's a sorcery. So it's like, yeah, yeah. all right, cool. But you have the option to not do that, so... Yeah, I'm this gonna, one, there's no option. I'm going to keep going. Hampering Snare. Creatures your opponent's control get negative 2, negative 0, cycling. Uh, if if this said negative 2, negative 0, and I drew a card, I'd play this. But because I have to choose, I'm less... There's already a card in standard that costs one more that lets you draw a card. I'll just do that. Yeah. 
Keep safe. Counter a spell that targets a permanent you control draw card. Yeah, this card's good. This card's good. I like this card. I mean, I think if you think about it, probably like 60 to 70% of the cards that you're countering anyway are going to be like removal spells, right? Like Heroes yep. Downfall, Murderous Rider, uh, Sweepers, like things like that that are going to target, that are going to essentially target. I guess like a Sweeper that you're not going to be able to counter a Sweeper with this, but. Would this have been too broken if it said counter target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control? Uh, it would have been rare, probably at that at that point. But do you think that do you just the card? Do you think it becomes broken? No, no, not at all. No, it's because okay. it's still a narrow reactive card, right? Yeah. What was the other card? Was there like a divest? Is that is that the card? No, divest is a black discard spell for creatures. Or, what? Really? Divest. Yeah, that's a one mana You're discard. Right. Tar- uh, yeah. Divert is it? Divert. Divert, a uh, divert sounds right. No, that's not. That's a change of target spell. There was another card like that. It was a. T- no, there's was... a couple of cards. Hindering light. Hindering light is the same thing as this, but it's uh, but it's uh, Dovin's veto mana, white blue. Hmm. Anyway. No, not disallow. Anyway, yeah, this card's good. I think keep safe is <laughs> diddle. <laughs> I want to put keep safe on the list. I I like this card. I think this is this is pretty cool. Mystic Subduel, two mana, flash, enchant creature, it gets negative two and loses all. This is it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sold on this. That's fantastic. This saves your Mothra. No, but it loses its own ability. <laughs> oh, that does, it does. This does not save your Mothra. It's like it loses flying, Rob, but it also <laughs> loses the ability that brings it back. So I'm sold on this. Not being um, a uh, you can put this on a questing beast, though, and that's yeah. pretty insane. Yeah. Then it's just a two four with no abilities, right? Like that's great. Yeah. Then it's just a it's just a draft card. Really? What? Questing a two four for four? Yeah. Oh, you're saying? Qu- I card. thought you meant Mystic Subduel was just a draft card. I was like, I think this is actually fine removal for like a a powerful. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know so. either. Actually, I don't think so. Hmm. <sighs> Maybe it doesn't go on the list. I don't know. No, this card's tricky. Nah, there there have been cards like this before. What if this said draw a card? Hmm? Oh, then that is very good. Yeah, all right. That is very good. Mythos of Eluna, the blue mythos, again by Seb McKinnon. This has been the Seb McKinnon set review here. Uh, four mana, create a token. See, this is I read this earlier. This is one of the, the five I've read earlier. Uh, create a token that's a copy of a permanence, right? So this is a token. So it means like, unlike traditional copy effects, if they bounce the copy effect, you just get to replay it. This one is a token, so they don't. You know, you, you'll never get it back. You get one this shot. This card is very good, though. This is really good. If you spend Teamer mana, so if you spend red, green, blue, blue to cast this, instead create a token that's a copy of that permanent, except the token has, when this permanent enters the battlefield, if it's a creature, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. So if you copy a questing beast, that's fine. If you copy a questing beast and use red and green, it'll fight something else. This, this card's very good. You're like, this is I think it's copies good. I their it's... Ugin. Very good. This copy, this copy. Oh, it their does. Land. Yeah, it does copy whatever you want. This the, copies their land. The problem is because I cube so frequently, my comparison to this is fracture identity, and oh, I think like, oh, it doesn't it. exile their permanent. It just lets us copy it. So if this I copy their Nissa, good. like they still have their Nissa. They can you can they can bolus and then you copy their bolus and kill their bolus. How can bolus kill bolus? Doesn't he? He has a negative destroy target planeswalker creature. Does it kill planeswalkers? Is that is that a thing? I thought it kills plane. I thought he can pull, kill planeswalkers. I don't know. I might be thinking of Garrick. I think you're probably right. Garrick only kills creatures, and you draw a yes, card. Yes, that's what I mean. Destroy a creature or planeswalker. Yeah, you're right. His negative three kills planeswalkers. This card is very good. Like this, this card just. It, I'm not saying like it's format defining or it makes a deck, but this card is so versatile in what it can do for the color of blue. It's awesome. Also, it's funny because despite how much I dislike red, I really like Teamer a lot. But I it's love funny team. because the three the three sh- shards slash wedges that I've mentioned in this stream have been uh, Teamer, Bant, and Sultai. So literally, as long as you're combining blue and green, that's that's where you're living. I'm in the right. I'm in. I'm where I'm at. I'm where I. That's need where to you're be. living. Yep. That's where I'm living, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the next card. This card's good. It's on the list. It should be on the list. Yeah, it's good. I said it's on the list, Robert. Is it good? Uh, neutralize three mana. This is definitely going on the list. So every every set or every block or every standard has a three mana counter spell that kind of like defines it. Suckles. Yes. Yeah, what? Wait. It suckles. You don't like this? 
No, you're saying every car, every set has a three mana counter spell that I'm saying they normally just they're normally kind of overlooked. They normally aren't that great. Oh no, I'm talking about like I'm talking about one that is good, like disallow, dissolve. Correct. That one's good. Neutralize. Um, neutralize. You just, whoop. Neutralize. That's this one. Yeah, I know, and it's very good. I think it's very good. Yeah. I think um, it's very good. I yeah, it's very good. Yeah. I think this is great. Yeah, it's it's very great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Above this card's good. It's above it's average. A, I think it's very above average, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this card's good. Neutralize on the list. Uh, it's, you know, it's better than Cancel, so... Uh... Did you just say, is it above, better than Sinister Sabotage? Absolutely. Is it? Yes. Absolutely. How so? If Sinister Sabotage, Sabotage put the card in your hand, different story. But this... You can do something with this when you're stuck on two mana. You can't <sighs> do something with Sinister Sabotage. Like my thing is like playing a three mana counter spell. But my thing is like a lot of times what I want to do with the counter spell is get rid of their big threat. That's why it's in my deck. So like I want to be able to be rewarded for doing so rather than like have to choose one or the other. You know what I mean? There are so many times in games that I that that I think we play in magic where after you lose a game and you are like barely holding on to 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 trying to stabilize and then you think back in the game you're like, "Oh, I would have saw one extra card had I done this." I this like your argument you here. I like your argument here. And also, like, if they have a questing beast on the board already and you draw neutralize, yeah, you exactly. need to deal with the creature on board, exactly. not necessarily countering it. I this Yeah, I agree with you. Okay. Yeah, I like it. That's a good argument. I appreciate that. Of one mind, three mana. This is this art's really cute. I like this. I love this. I love these like this human animal companionships and 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 bondings that are happening in the set. This spell costs two less if if you control a human creature and a non human creature. Draw two cards. Card's great. This is not bad. Yeah, I'm gonna put this on the list. At the lowest, and it's a divination. Right. That's what I mean. Like it literally is divination, which is a standard playable card. At the highest end, you're paying one mana to draw two. Yeah. This card's good. Yeah. This yep. card's sweet. I'm surprised this is only common. This could have easily been an uncommon as a one mana draw two. And again, like we are seeing a lot of cards that say a human and a non-human and a non-human. Right. So. You're, 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 the decks are already being built that way. This is not altering the way that, that decks have already existed in the formats. They're so. really encouraging interspecial inter oh inter inter <laughs> relationships. What I'm getting interspecial. At. That's a hard word to say, man. Interspecial. Our relationship is special. It's, it's so, it's, it's so, we're the species, we have the most special relationship I've ever had. Special. Ominous Seas. Speaking. Two mana. Whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seas. That's going to be easy to track. I mean, thankfully, that doesn't do anything. It's just the name of the card, the counter, like like a muster token from um, a muster counter from like Assemble the Legion. You know what I mean? Assemble the yeah. Yeah, a lot of times they name counters things that that don't do anything. It's just a cool flavor counter, and that's fine because you can just put a die on this thing. Remove eight foreshadow counters to create an eight eight blue kraken. So this card absolutely will see play. This card I will go off. I absolutely love it. You know why I love this card? Because it's rewarding I, you for doing things you want to do anyway. And you're already doing it. Right. I'm drawing a card either way, every turn. Yeah. So I can just play this on two, sit behind counter spells, and then I'll be like, on one turn, I'll draw three. Uh, make a Kraken. And, like, if you don't need it, if it's, like, late in the game and you don't have the time, you just cycle it. Yep. This card's yeah, good. This yeah, card's it also feeds other Cs, ominous Cs itself, by drawing you cards. This card is very good, and, and we haven't seen it yet. I know you're going to yell at me for talking about it, but there are cards that let you draw extra cards per turn. So... This card's going to be really good. I'm sorry. Phase Dolphin. Is that it's a not dude a, It's not a phase Dolphin. Is that a doodad? Is that, is that a dude underneath it? Yeah, that's a dude underneath the phase Dolphin. Whenever phase Dolphin attacks, Thank you. another target attack. creature can't be blocked this turn. We've seen this one. A three mana for a one four. Yeah, this is just a reprint. It's just a blue version of... Um... Dan's with a resub. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Welcome back, buddy. Dingus, dingus sake, well. thank you so much for the reset. Really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Just in time for interspecial relationships. <laughs> yeah, buddy. It's perfect. Your timing? Yeah. All right, we're going to go to the next one because this is just a cool, limited dude. Look at this art. This is fantastic. I want to poke that thing straight in the stomach, right in the gullet. <laughs> dude, it will kill you if you did that. Is it sticky? You think it's sticky or you think it's smooth? <laughs> Polywog symbiote. One, three, for two. I'm not going to answer. Your, I'll never answer that question. Two mana for a one, three. Each creature spell you cast 
costs one less if it has mutate. So you're, so basically your mutate creature. Why don't you just say mutate creatures cost one less? Just be real. Let's be real informal about it. Mutate creatures are cheaper. Just put that in the text. Whenever you cast a creature, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard. So you loot. Okay. In the mutate deck, this is a cute little like wannabe lord, like a lord wannabe. This comes down. This 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 card is either do I have enough space in that deck or not? I don't know. I, I don't know. What, I don't know. We know what the deck looks like, so I can't really say. You know. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you have That's no what idea. I'm saying. If it's That's right, what I'm, I'm saying. Sorry. Although you can mutate on this on this uh, sticky and it fella. It keeps the ability. Yeah, it does keep his yeah. abilities. If you mutate onto the sticky fella. Pouncing shark, shore shark, pouncing shore shark. Dude. Four three. Look at this fuck. The arms on this thing are. God <laughs> Jesus. He's so strained, man. Like, what is he doing right now? What is he going after? He's taking a dump. <laughs> he's, it shot him straight out just like a jackass he's like an, absolutely taking a dump in or the water dave right chappelle now. dave chappelle like a dave chappelle i'm gonna whenever this creature mutates you may return a creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand so it's just basically like uh what's a five mana what was the oh, like ogre Smot? ogre Smot was literally a, a was it a three two for five i've never even heard of that card ogre savant no unbelievable man unbelievable ogre savant you were like what what month were you born uh may ogre what day the ninth savant <laughs> ogre savant <laughs> choose your creature <laughs> choose your creature type <laughs> it's based on them i'm oh, an ogre God. savant crying out loud dude yeah so okay card seems fine right like i mean it's too expensive Four mana for a bouncy boy? It's got flash? Yeah. No, it's not four mana for a bouncy boy. It's four mana with another boy to bounce on. <laughs> that was unintentional. Just give it. Just give it. Just give it. <laughs> <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> Oh, Jesus, Lord. <laughs> Terms of service, Rob. Terms of service. Oh. Oh, wow. It's uh. another... It's another boy. No. <laughs> Four mana. Whenever... Reconnaissance mission. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. I blacked out. What'd you say? I like this effect. Frank, will you hold the Captain America shield up to the camera? No, I can't. It's too far back. I could bring it over here after the break, after uh, between the two set reviews, though. That'd be. Right. I like this card. I do too. I like this effect. I always like when this reminds me of Thopter Spy Network when it was like yes, you know I was going to say one. Thopter Foundry, but yeah, Thopter yeah, yeah. Spy Network. Like, there's a lot of four mana blue enchantments that like affect your entire board. Like when you attack, like I'm, it's going to do a certain thing. It's not looting. You just draw the card, and it's not whenever whenever any number of creatures deals combat damage, you draw a card. So like, if I attack with three guys and they all get through, I'm drawing a card. No, this it's, is whenever it, a creature. So if, if I have three dudes, they all get through. I draw three cards. Yeah, this like, card seems really good. And again, like this cycling is just so good. Cycling is such a great mechanic where it's like, if I'm on <laughs> turn two and I can't hit a third land drop, I can just get rid of this piece of junk, and and draw a card. You know, like it's really good. I mean, we've seen we've seen. I I don't feel like we saw the blue creatures, but we we've seen a lot of cards in blue and white that say I want to play an aggro some sort of deck that's putting creatures on the board and dealing damage right, and we're yeah. getting we're, but know, i mean again like there is that blue white flyers deck in standard so if they're like right. playing like spectral sailor into like uh the hangman dude with yeah. ex uh i forgot his name Hang but. executioner hangman's executioner is oh that's two dudes you're right yeah right then, so then, then like the you, next turn you if swing, you play yeah. turn this turn on turn this on turn four and then you just attack with three guys like yeah. it's pretty good yep i agree all right c dasher octopus <laughs> three mana for a two two with flash every card every blue creature in this set <laughs> that is even remotely playable has flash apparently uh whenever this creature does combat damage to a player draw a card i kind of like this this isn't this is still a good card this is a three mana flash that can draw you a card the well, turn the, after you play it yeah but also the mutate ability just makes it like curious obsession it's a two mana curious obsession right except for you don't get punished for not attacking with it well yeah but so it's like it's a curiosity it's a two mana curiosity well no i'm, I'm i was i was agreeing with you saying if anything this is just better i right. mean it costs an extra mana but but you also get a two two out of it it's, it's a it's a curious obsession that literally wow. exists on its own it doesn't yeah, need so a creature if i go turn one spectral sailor you go tap land 
I like, go turn to flash this um, on. mutate it, attack, draw my card. You keep the you two untap, two. Kill it. You untap, kill it. Then I would keep nothing. They both die. Nothing. But you drew a card. I mean, like that's the point, right? It's but the good. nice thing is, like, if you put this on a spectral sailor, it is a it is a two two flyer still with the four mana draw a card ability, and it still you draw a card every time it deals combat damage. Like, I think this card's good. I think this is I think this is good. And and the it's it's actually in a sweet spot because we're in a world where for three mana, if we're on the play and we're playing this for three mana, our opponents are paying three mana for an Uro, so they're not blocking it at least one turn. You're getting a card off of it. Dude, this this format yeah, this format has so many pieces for like Simic Flash, it's really funny. Like yeah. this card is good. Uh the um the 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 voracious shark that we're probably coming up on is good. Are you ready? Here it goes. Hit me. Oh, this card is my favorite card in this set. So far. So far. I'm, I'm just writing it down immediately. This card so is wait, bonkers. Blue blue cycling deck. Are you doing it? Is that deck one? I don't know if it's deck one. Like, I was talking about adding this to, like, um... I was talking about adding this to the Simic Flash deck again, because it's like... For some reason, if you play, like, the, the, the blue enchantment uh, escape protocol... And you like cycle shark typhoon, make a four four flyer, blink my three mana. mystic, counter your thing. You like, get the three mana cycle or, or cycle the counter spell for three mana. That's that's not bad. Right. That's that's what, yeah, right? Like there's a lot of tools for it. And also like this card just seems insane. Like making a five five flyer, four four flyer, three three flyer that gets around Teferi and yeah. draws you a card and it's uncounterable. Like, why does it fly? I feel like the flying is just such a it's such an icing on the cake, you know? Yeah, it's really good. This card's very good. Oh wow, Fires of Invention seems insane with this too, because like it gets around like you play your two spells on your turn, at the end of their turn you cycle this, make like a six six or whatever. And you still yeah. get to make a flyer, you still get to draw a card. Yeah. Like that's insane. If the shark stop flying, does it die? That's a good question. It depends on where it lands. Mm, that's a good question. Well, no, because like sharks have to keep swimming. Like sharks keep swimming unless they or else they die. You know what I mean? Like that old that old thing. Is that true? That's a that's what they say. Oh, you can't cast on their turn. Yeah, you can't cast it, but you can cycle it, which is the point. You cycle it. Yeah, but you can't you're not cast... using your mana. Well, yeah, you're never gonna cast this for. You know, it's an enchantment. You can never cast it on their turn anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like if if you don't have fires out, you still can't cast it on their turn. What you're doing is cycling it on their turn. This card's great. I, I think this is this is like Decree of Justice, Hydroid, Crassus, and Muldrifter rolled into one, right? Like, for for the same five mana that you pay for a Muldrifter, you're getting a 3-3 three, three flyer that draws you one at instant speed instead of a 2-2 two, two flyer that draws you two. It can't be countered. Right? Yeah, yeah that's what not, I mean. Like, it's, it's just, it's so yet. good. It's such a good card. And again, it's another one of those cards where it's like, if it costs too much, or if you just don't have the time to use it, like the six mana I'm portion, trying to get rid of it. Yeah. But like the, the the thing about this card is that like the the cycling might just be the best mode anyway. Yeah. You know, which is weird because you assume that the the main it is. mode it is, is the best. It is the best it mode. It is. I agree. It is. 6 mana is too much for this ability. The 6 mana also doesn't do anything on the board. Yeah. Right? Like even if you play this on turn 3 as a 1/1, one, one, it's still just Tome Raider at instant speed. Yeah. Yeah. Card is a shark. You're a shark. Thanks. Until the end of the turn, two mana, until the end of the turn, target creature becomes a blue serpent with base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. So this, we've seen this card again. I love this art. This art's hilarious. I can't what, even tell what it is. It's like this creature, and it's like it's like in the bird nest, and the eagle's like trying to give it a fish. And it's just like, oh, it's like a blue, sea, it's a blue serpent in a bird nest, uh, because apparently one of the birds has become a blue serpent until the end of the turn. Again, the cycling's nice. I don't know, that's not going to play. Thieving Otter, three mana for a Low two cutie. two. Whenever it deals damage to an opponent, draw a card. How, like this is just this is funny because it's just a Sea Dash or Octopus that's strictly worse, right? Yeah, why? It's are, not strictly yeah, why are because we, of the I, casting. I cost, haven't seen I this card yet. I haven't seen this card yet. But why, a, why are we doing? Cutie. Why are we tacking on deals damage, draw cards so much already? This is the third card that's like draw a card whenever you deal damage, right? Four, I think. This is uh, fourth. at least reconnaissance mission, Sea Dash or Octopus, and Thieving Otter all when they deal combat damage, draw a card. And there was one that there was one that you draw a card, but you discard a card. Well, wait, that wasn't, that wasn't on attacks though. That was whenever you mutate. Oh, you're right. right. You're right. That was, uh, yeah, you're right. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to keep going forward then. But, uh, okay. MTG EDH three said, but this is better because it's an otter. <laughs> I, 
I mean, that sounds with correct. A... I agree with that. I I do think this this art's super cute and like. I like it a lot. Also, look at the guy in the background trying to get his stuff back from this. He wants a satchel this, back. This mischievous otter. You little, you little scamp, you. Voracious Great Shark, another one of my favorite cards in the set. I love that two of my favorite cards so far have been shark-themed. Uh, five mana for a 5-4 with Flash. When it enters the battlefield, counter an artifact or a creature spell. The only problem with this is it doesn't counter Planeswalkers. That's literally my only beef with it. But, like, the thing is you can just flash it in at the end of their turn and kill their Planeswalker anyway. Presumably. So uh, I have two. I have two they comments. Have I guess they'll just bounce it. I have two comments. My first I comment hear, is: I want to hear your comments. I don't think that this card is any good. Uh, I know you disagree. I do. I, I don't like you. Five is too much. Uh, my second comment is: I think you love these shark cards so much because of the art is so like realistic looking and angry. <laughs> if if it looked like Bruce from Finding Nemo, you'd be like, "This card sucks. This isn't playable. This is junk." If it was cartoonish. Oh, that's interesting. I think the art is making you think the card's better hey, than man, it is. Hey, man, don't psychoanalyze me, all right? Don't psychoanalyze me. Oh, Grandma <laughs> Boofy, what up? Thank you so much for the sub. God, Grandma Boofy. This is not easier to cast than Green Green Blue Blue Snake, because this costs an extra mana. No, that's it's still easier to cast. It's not cheaper, but it is easier to cast. If I have a mono blue deck, this is easier to cast than Frilled Mystic. Fair. Like, the mana cost is just easier to cast. Like, that's just how, that's just how we... <laughs> Someone in chat said the otter is cartoonish and Frank loves it. That's true. <laughs> yeah, your yeah, your point's invalid. This but card's because great. it's an otter. This You're is a, a shark. In a in a control deck and like a blue white control deck, this card is just great. Like you get to counter one of their big threats. It's not an early game card. It's definitely a late, like draining whelk is the card I compared it to, which is a six mana creature that counters a spell. But it's always like the cost of the spell. So if they play a three mana creature that you want to get rid of, it's going to be a three three with flying. Right. This is always a five four. And you can always flash it in. That's yeah. just a threat, right? So maybe. Wingfold Terron. Also, the server is definitely taking longer than our usual server views, but I think it's because we haven't uh streamed together in a while and I've been enjoying our, our back. We're just and forth. Enjoy yeah, we're enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, it's just a nice it's just a nice uh it's a nice return. Six mana for a three six. Wingfold Terran enters the battlefield with your choice of a flying counter or a hex proof counter on it. So it's six mana, it's not playable, but it should have flash. <laughs> It doesn't have flash, surprisingly. Everything yeah. else does. Not this guy. Wingspan Mentor. Three mana for a 1-3. Another three mana card. When it enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on a non-human creature you control. Uh, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature you control with flying. That's too much. Power. I don't think this is good enough. This doesn't do anything. Yeah. It's good for limited. I play them limited. Thank you. This doesn't even fly, though, which is hilarious. You're mentoring things on how to fly, but you yourself yeah, yeah. can't fly. Like, the flavor's good. It's like a it's like a chef who's like, hey, let me teach you how to make this dish. I can't do it myself, but I'll teach you how to do it. And you're like, but I believe in you. Can't you do it? Why can't you? Oh, we're on the black cards. All right, so the cards in blue that we like. Anticipate, Escape Protocol, Essence Scatter, Keep Safe, Mythos of Aluna, Neutralize, Of One Mind, Ominous Seas, Reconnaissance Mission, Sea Dash or Octopus, and Shark Typhoon. And Voracious Great Shark. That's his name, right? Great Shark? Yeah, Great what Shark. A great, what a Great Shark. It's in the fucking name, Rob. It's called a Great Shark. <laughs> well, how do you not like it, man? It's literally uh, called... It's great. too expensive, man. It's too expensive. Haters gonna hate. Lovers gonna love. I don't even want. You know how it goes. None of the above. I'm trying to fix... There it is. Okay. I'm trying to fix the... I think it's... Okay. The zoom is still good, I guess. Do, 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 do. Okay. You ready? You ready for the yep. black? Bastion of Remembrance. Three mana for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier token. Whenever a creature you control... This is this is the card's way of being like, all right, we're going to give you something. Because if you don't have any creatures, this card's terrible. So we'll give you a 1-1 one, one so that you can just throw it away and draw a card. This is basically like a poor man's Phyrexian arena that you have to work way too hard for, right? Phyrexian's arena? No. No. What are you talking? Phyrexian's arena lets you draw cards. This is a blood artist on an enchantment. Oh, it's lose a life, gain a life. Okay, I thought it was draw a card, lose a life. For some reason, I, I blacked out for a second. Yeah, no, this card's actually pretty good, I think. Is it? It's, I guess it's, it is a, it's it actually a, is it's a blood, blood artist. artist you, yeah. This, this seems pretty good to me. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, I think it goes on the list. Okay, I'll put it on the list for you. Here's, I don't here's think it's why. bad. You it's have also an unkillable. It's an unkillable blood artist yeah. as well. 
you have in standard right now you have um obviously you have cat oven you oh. have cruel celebrant which does oh. the same thing <laughs> and you have the uh corpse knight which also drains mana drains when a uh, creature ETBs that's a lot of those judith drain effects judith is another one the, yeah the, i didn't even think about Braco that stack. blitz leech that's a what? quick ass leech si why do you call it blitz leech when it costs 6 mana it's so <laughs> slow uh, it's so long i feel like I feel like Wizards doesn't know what the what the what speed means in magic. Hey man, what's that cost? Six mana? That's fast. Call it Blitz Leech. No haste either. <laughs> like, but we gave it flash, so think of how fast it's gonna be. When it enters the battlefield, a creature an opponent controls gets a negative two, negative two, remove all counters from the creature. No, dude. This is this is just a poor man's ravenous chupacabra. Yeah. Blood curdle, four mana, very destroy cool. a creature, put a menace counter on a creature you control. This card's amazing and limited. Uh, four yeah, mana is a little much for standard, so we're gonna move on. But yeah, yeah, this is one black at instant speed for any creature. That's fantastic, and you yeah. like, you could say destroy target creature for four mana at instant speed and limited. You're fuck, you're golden, but like, putting a menace account on a creature is just gravy. Rob yep, loves this. Really good. I love gravy. Oh, boot nipper, <laughs> two one for two. Boot nipper enters the battlefield with your choice of a death touch or a lifelink counter on it. So creatures like this historically do see play, like the one ones or the two ones for two that with death touch, um, just because they're nice versatile creatures that that like deal with bigger threats, um, like the like the one that milled you for three and you gained two. That guy Meyer Triton. Meyer Triton. Yep. Triton. This yeah. is just worse though, I think. It is, but the fact that you gain death touch or life link, like it's not terrible. But Meyer Triton already gains you life and it has death touch. Okay, but I mean. I, I get that it's worse than Meyer Triton, but my point is that cards like this do see play, and I think on that, you know, on that metro of you know, based on that, like I think it's the card itself isn't bad. I think the versatility like it's just child of night, right? But like you can give it death touch. Like I think the the versatility here is strong. Like the versatility is strong with this one. Yeah, I like it. I I'm not gonna put it on the list. But I do like it. I do think it's a good design. Like I think it's a good like I think it's a good way to give uh, give one or the other abilities. Bush meat poacher, four. Ma <laughs> <laughs> Come on, four mana for a two four. Sacrifice another creature. You gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Draw a card. Mm, four mana is a lot here. It's too much. You're asking me for a lot here. No, it's too much. I'm gonna keep going. Call of the Death Dweller, three mana. Return up to two target creature cards with converted total mana cost of three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a death touch counter on either of them, then put a menace counter on either of them. This so card's put, so good. I can put death touch and menace on the same one, right? Correct. That's what I'm reading. It doesn't have to be the other. Correct. Yeah, okay. This card's so good. Is it that good? I think this three mana get two dudes back? Well, it's not two. It's it's total converted mana cost. So you have to have a one drop and a two drop. Yeah. Cause, or two one drops, right? Like those are your only two combinations or, or a zero three drop. drop or three zero drop. is also zero is even buddy nobody's playing ornithopters in standard okay this card's very good do you think this is a, a an older format card uh, actually yeah I, what if I you get what if you get back death right shaman and stoneforge mystic what if you get back death shadow and death shadow <laughs> what if you give them both menace what that if you give terrifying. one menace one death touch that's you have that option that's a choice this card okay, seems very see, good. Now you're selling me. Now you're selling me on that a lot. I'm gonna be Old... honest. <laughs> and you named a uh, you named a uh, death right was not a good name. Uh, but the fact that Why? you can bring back so many it's strong in every format. No, but no, no. Yeah, it's it's banned in in legacy. Right. That's what I mean. It's banned in modern. It's banned Thank in pioneer. You. So yeah, yeah. But but I was I was kind of agreeing with you because the fact that this can bring back Stoneforge, right. and a powerful one drop is very good. Yeah, like if I just get like Bird of Par a noble hierarch Stoneforge Mystic for three mana. Giving That's like, weird. yeah, like I mean, like, yeah, I, I I think it's good. This is not the same as Unearth. No, plus you get additional perks on top of this at the end. Like, big get like the menace counter and the death touch counter is just super nice. Like, it's just a nice little bonus. Like, Delver with a menace counter. I want to put a like even if you get a land of war elf and just put a death touch counter on it, it's just a lot better than it was. You know, it's got the touch of death. I'll get a Tarmogoyf, give it menace. I'll get a land of war elf, give it death touch, and now it's like okay, well, now you can't block my Tarmogoyf, and my land of war elf can kill your Tarmogoyf. You know, so it's it can, yeah, dude. This, this is cool. actually 
This is good. It There's gets a back lot Bob. of applications for this card. It gets back Bob. I do like a Bob. This is this this card seems like it can be it can it can be broken. Jace Vrin's Prodigy. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah, it. Yeah, this is really good. All right, I'm in. Oh, you can get a Jace Vrin's Prodigy back, activate it, flip it, then recast it then from recast the graveyard. It. <laughs> yep. This card's sweet, dude. All right. Yeah, I like that. All right. Cavern Whisper, five mana for a four four. You're probably done. Menace. Mutate for four. Whenever this creature mutates, you just want to discard the card. That's a cool limited card. There's a lot yeah, of things like happening on this card. This is a lot of things going on. So I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the next one. Boop! Chittering Harvester. Uh four six for six. Same thing as the last one. Whenever this creature mutates, each one it sacrifices a creature. Oh, it's oh man, he's doing the He's doing the Joaquin Phoenix from Gladiator over here. Corpse Churn. Two mana. Put the top three cards of your library in your graveyard, then you may return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. <laughs> Solid. There's no thumbs down, Solid. though. There's no thumbs down. That's funny. That's a real, that's a real positive... Uh, <laughs> it's a positive program. Um, This being an instant is interesting. Isn't this just, like, worse than, like, Ransack the thing? Because that lets you pick, pick it on any cards. But the thing is, this, this returns any creature from your graveyard, not just one of the ones you've milled. So... What do you think about? Am I that? lagging? Am I lagging? No, I'm not lagging. Okay. No, you're fine. You um, just, just gotta say some some words, man. <laughs> you can't hear anything because you're try not talking. To, try to, yeah, I know. Um, I'm like, how do you know if you're lagging? You haven't said anything. I think the most important part of this card that is missing in standard right now is there are very few ways that are actually good or or decent to put uh, cards into your graveyard. Hunter's <laughs> just wandering in. I just laughed because literally my dog just walked in at the same time. <laughs> Dogs are all connected, man. They're all waking up right now. Come here. Come here. Hey, what are you talking about? Cards in the Oh, here comes Ruby. Oh, it's oh, it's a dog stream, guys. We got dogs all day. Oh, she's adorable, <laughs> dude. She's heavy. All right, I'm back. I'm sorry. Deathrite Shaman is legal in Pioneer. Oh, yeah, you're right. Deathrite Shaman is legal in Pioneer, but no one Pioneer, gives a shit because, yeah. yeah. like, there's no fetch lands. They're like, yeah, sure, go play with it. Nobody cares. Yeah. yeah. All right, so what are you saying about Corpse Turn? I, I think you could put this on the list, not because this is a guaranteed slam dunk, but this... I think it's fine. I, I, I think it's fine. The fact that it puts stuff in your graveyard can be relevant. And it's an instant, so... Yeah, exactly. Uh, grapple from the past. Grapple the past. Right. Very But similar. that also hit lands, did it not? It did. It did. So that was helpful. Like on turn two, you're like, I need a third land. I can find it. So mm -hmm. I agree with you, though. I do think I do think this has qualities, like like putting the top three cards of your library in your graveyard is not, um, like that's a cute perk, right? Like that's not necessarily a downside. Yeah. Okay. Dark bargain. Four mana for an instant. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand, and the other in your graveyard. So reprint. Two damage to you. Right. Um. What is this from, though? Like, what is this? Is this from Dominaria? No, I think it was from before that. Because there was also Bitter Ordeal, which I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah, it was from Dominaria. Dark Bargain is Dominaria. You're wrong. I just I won. Yeah, because we used to have Bargle. We used to have Dark Bargle. We used to make bargain jokes with Yargle <laughs> in the format, right? Okay, good talk. Good talk. Dude, is this constructed playable? What are you doing over here, no. man? No. You diddling? trying to read chat i was doing okay, chat okay all right no i don't think it's playable yeah if i'm like looking four this mana way, is too high okay that's good chat. to know dead weight again this is reprinted this is like two two copies of this in standard right now is that right yeah there's yeah yep yeah yep 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 yeah it's also in guilds of ravnica currently i like this art a lot more uh even though i feel bad for this tiny little this little cutie tiny well i think it was just I feel like it was enhanced. I don't think this is its natural size. It mutated. You're not my quarry, little one. I'm off. I'm after whatever comes to investigate your. Cr oh, geez, that's, you're, that's something's just, larger. That's just the bait. There's always a larger prey, beast. Yeah. What do you think about this card? It's. I mean, it's good. Like, right. Like this is this card's always been decent, uh, especially if like you're trying to get delirium. Not so. seeing play right now. So no, it's not seeing play right now, unfortunately. But it's all right. I mean, I think dead weights. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a card that I have a hard time like criticizing because it does have its its purposes, right? There, are, right. There are formats where dead weight is a good card. Dirge bat. Oh, uh, bat with mutate three three for four with flash and flying. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, destroy a creature or planeswalker and opponent control. This card seems good. 
God, the six mana mutate cost though. You think this is good? This is no, not good. Not anymore. I it's did. not a mutate. It's not a mutate. So we're looking at a four mana three three flash flyer. Right. It's and not a mutate. What does that mean? Because you're never gonna have this in your deck. The, the, to right. The six mana six. is like just too high, dude. Yeah. Yeah. This sucks. Like if this was. What if it was five? Too much. For this and it's to be still playable, dependent on on having another creature. Like if they have another creature out, you go to mutate it, right? If they kill your guy, you still get the three three, but like then you don't get the destroy part. So like, who cares? I think this is this this is this becomes playable at four. Mutate four. Right, because that's what it competes with. Like eat the eat to extinction, Vraska's contempt, yep, Chupacabra. Like that's what you're competing with. Yep. But like for six mana, like Jesus, the damage is done, man. Yeah, no, this Tefri is really comes out on three and Dirge Bat's like, hold on, I'll, I'll be there in a minute. I'm on my way. And you're like, uh, <laughs> like don't worry about it, man. Uh, Durable Coil Bug. Two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Return it from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. Dusk Fang Mentor. Three mana for a 1-3. Another, all the humans in this set are three mana. Every single one, dude. When Duskfang Mentor enters the battlefield, put a lifelink counter on a non-human creature you control. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature. This it's is just, just a, a black... Mentor. It's, it's Right, it's, a, it's another Mentor. I guess the Mentors are a cycle. Oh my... This card's good, right? I like this card. Easy Prey, 2 mana. Destroy a creature with converted mana cost 2 or less. And it's like it's kind of like a, a, a little less powerful smother that also cycles. Yeah. Can you hear my dog barking? I'm sorry. No, I can't. Oh, okay, fine. good. Don't even worry about it, man. You're good. Um, maybe they can. I can't though. But I'm hearing yeah. what they're hearing, so I don't know. That doesn't dude. make sense. This think. card's good though. I like this card. Oh yeah, for sure. And like again, just tack on cycling to staple cards that are already good, and yep, you'll be fine. I think it's, if it's not, hold on. I think if I, I think if it does not have cycling, it's not good. It's way too narrow. Oh yeah, to for not sure. I agree with you. The cycling makes it because if I'm playing against a control deck and they don't have any targets, like. But it's always doing something, right? Like, that's yep. that's the thing. The cycling means it's always doing something. Extinction event. Choose odd or even exile each creature with a converted mana cost of the chosen value. This card's great. Yep. Seems pretty sweet. I mean, you're always going to get rid of their biggest creature. Oh, oh it like... eats every... Oh, holy cow. Exile each creature with converted mana cost. It eats every Nissa land. Even through a Nissa Oh, my emblem. God. You named zero. Yeah. That's real good. Yeah. Oh, you say you're not zero. You just say even. Yeah, you but it would also even... get their questing beast, which is hilarious. You know, this is great. It kills... Like this, oh. this card is great because it's always going to kill the creature you want it to kill, which is and basically then... the same as like a Vraska's Contempt at four mana, because you're yep. always going to be able to kill at least the thing you want to. But it also like you can literally choose multiple things if you really need to. This card's great, and it's an instant. No, just kidding. Can you imagine? This card's really good. Yeah, this card's really good. I agree. This is a nice sweeper, especially for like four mana, like a, a single black at four mana. Like, yeah, this is actually surprising. Splashable. Yeah. The fact that it, the fact that it kills every, it deals with every Nissa land through a Nissa emblem is what I love. Yeah. Right. Because you're exiling them. Yep. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's gravy. Just gravy. Gloom Pangolin, three mana for a one five. So we have one mana for an O oh five. Three mana for a one five, four mana for a one six, and those, <laughs> and that's the and that's the show right there, boys. Grim Dancer, three three for three. Hold me closer, Grim Dancer. It enters the battlefield with two different counters from among Menace, Death Touch, and Lifelink. This card seems good. This card's so good. I love this card. I mean, if you give it Life Touch, Life Life Touch, and Life death, Touch, and Death Link. <laughs> Um, it's just a three three. It's just a vampire nighthawk without flying and one more power, right? This card's good. I like this card. Like medicine lifelink is good. Yeah, this card's good. I like this. I they love when stuff. cards like this look play like like constructed playable, even if they're like not the most impressive ever. They're just solid. It's, like it's unassumingly good. They're just solid role players. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yep. Heartless act. This card is the most insane rule spell I've seen in a long time, dude. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm not even talking in the context of this set, right? Because there's going to be a lot of creatures that can't kill. But in general, like, I, if I slot this into my cube, it's just strictly better than Go for the Throat, Doom Blade, and uh, Ultimate Price in that in the cube, right? Like, destroy a creature with no counters on it. That's every creature in the cube, almost. Unless it's like an undying, 
like a Jarl's Messenger of the one one counter, right? Like the uh, the important part about this card compared to all the other ones that we want to compare it to is that this always has a target, whereas the other ones sometimes do not even have a target. Right. If your creature, yeah, if your creature does have counters on it, you just get to remove the counters, right? So you're yeah. always going to be doing something with this card. Yep. This card's so good. Or a ballista. Right, but if they, if they have a ballista, you could just remove the counter so then it dies, right? So yeah. it's, it's basically the same thing. Yeah, if you like if really they good. have even if they have like a uh, hangerback walker, right? Like you remove the counters from the hangerback walker and you probably just kill it usually. Most you either of the kill time. it or they or it's or now it's like one, one, one one. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, this card's great, dude. Yeah. I mean, even if yeah, but even Villa, even if it killed a hangerback walker, they're still going to like shoot you in response. So the result is usually very similar. And the thing is, if you do target a hangerback walker, they can't shoot you in response or else it probably just dies. Like if Ooh. they have a 5-5 five five and, and you go to remove three counters, they can't remove those counters in response to, to shoot you because then they then it dies at the end of that. This card is this card is even better than I realized because oh, wow. I completely forgot that it's not just plus one, plus one counters. So death touch, menace, right, flying Right, you're getting counters. rid of death touch, lifelink, whatever. Right, that's, yeah, right, that's, that's the point. That's awesome. Oh, you didn't even catch that one, huh? No. Hey, yeah. give me two seconds. I'm going to let my dog out real quick. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on. I'll pause. All right, Rob is back. And, uh, yeah, let's go to the next one. Hunted Nightmare. Oh, I like this. Three mana for a 4-5 with Menace. Okay. Uh, that's going to be great. There's no way this goes downhill, right? When it enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a death touch counter on a creature they control. I love this card. This card's that's so good. Not, that's fine. Dude, like, that's what like, if they have no creatures? That, well, that's right. That's presumably. On turn two, you go kill their guy at the end of their turn. And then turn three, you just play 4-5 Menace with no downside. On the play, you go Arboreal Grazer, turn two, Hunted Nightmare into their tap land. Well, also, the Menace is just great anyway, because like if they double block, in response, you kill the one with the Death Touch counter, and then they just eat the other one. Yep. Oh, this dude's great. Yep. Yeah, I like this card. And it's a Nightmare. That's cool. Nightmares are cool, man. They're not cool. Insatiable Hemorrhage. Ha hemophage. I was going to say Hemorrhage. 3-3 three, three for 4. Are you okay? You got a little yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, death touch three three four four with death touch. Whenever this creature mutates, each opponent loses X, and you gain X for X is the number of times this creature. Okay, so that doesn't do anything. So you gain one, lose one. Like how many creatures realistically do you expect to put on this? You know, like I'm gonna mutate for a fourth time. So here's the one thing I will say. I'm gonna listen. Well, I'm when we did a set review for um, the set with Oko, yeah, one of the I'll never forget, and I think it's funny because every time we talk about doing set reviews, I think about this. Oh God. I said that Wicked oh, Wolf was not a good card. Right. And it would not right. be a good card. And even with Oko, there wasn't enough uh, there wasn't to support. There wasn't enough food tokens. Yeah. Who knows? Like, I I, I don't think you're going to be mutating four or five times in a game. You're probably already winning that game, in my opinion. But you never know. Maybe the format is it drags out. And so maybe <laughs> all these cards are actually good. Frank, nightmares are cool. My son. No, they aren't. He's right. Your son is correct. I agree. My problem is the cost, though, right? Like, not only that, but, like, you just kill it in response, right? If they go to mutate this a third time, I'm going to kill the two creatures you've already stapled together. Like, because like, you're putting all... It's, it's just all your eggs in one basket. That's the difference, you know? I, yeah. I mean, I, it's hard to... It, without ever playing mutate, it's hard to judge if it's, it's going to be... Right. That's exactly. I agree with you. Lurking Deadeye. I mean, either way, we're not putting this on the list, right? No. Okay, just making sure. Lurking Dead Eye, four mana for a four two with flash. Everything in this set has flash. It's so flash. Weird. Draw a card. You get There's, a token. Everything is so quick. <laughs> when Lurking Dead Eye enters the battlefield, destroy a creature that was dealt damage this turn. This card sucks. Okay. Memory leak, three mana. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non land card from it. Uh, from that player's graveyard or hand in exile it cycling one this seems good no it's not good agonizing, so? agonizing remorse is better okay. three mana is too much that's too really? much hmm. yeah uh this art looks like reprinted art i i don't know what it's from don't forget the cycle bro i know about the cycle bro it cycles but can someone can someone figure out where this art is from it's from a white bordered card, but bro, this bro, art looks bro, identical to it. Bro, it cycles. This card isn't that. good. Dang it, Katie. Thank you, <sighs> thank you, Katie. I hate it. God damn it. Mutual destruction, one mana. This spell has flash as long as you control a permanent with flash. Come on, everybody controls a permanent with flash. Have you seen the set? As an additional cost to cast this spell, sack a creature or destroy a creature. This is just a bone splinters with flash, right? 
Yeah, and I I saw someone I saw someone on Twitter a couple of people saying this card's broken and I just don't see it. Like I, I don't think so that's at all. that's such a bad clause. I don't so get it. So what if the creature I'm sacrificing has flash because it's part of the cost, right? Do I still get to play it or do I have to have a creature with flash in addition to the creature I'm sacrificing when I pay the cost? That's confusing. That's actually an interesting question because it's part of the it cost. So you're paying cost. it. Yeah, you're paying it. Oh god. I don't know. Oh, God. Let's you just can sack the flash. Okay. Do you want to play Hearthstone? I trust Katie. She's this is a, too much. She's a, she's a judge. She's a smart judge. What are you, is this card? This card's fine. I don't think it's... No, it like, sucks. I mean, it's Bone Splinters. But no one's ever played Bone Splinters. Why is this broken all of a sudden? Because, like, what flash creature are you going to have that you're playing in standard in your black deck? Like, why would this be better than Bone Splinters? Who, people on Twitter are like, this is broken? What Do they I, read I, the... I, the additional they don't, cost? They, they know read. Oh my god. Mythos of Nethroy. Alright, this is our black with our black uh Abzan mythos. Three mana. Destroy a non land permanent if it's a creature. Or destroy a non land permanent if it's a creature. Oh, okay, right. Or if it's <laughs> it's worded really weirdly, right? I did the same thing when I read it the first or time. Or if green white was spent to cast this, I'm like, what? Right, so if you pay Abzan mana, you can destroy any non-land permanent. If you only pay black, you, this card's phenomenal. It's so good. It's any creature again. Like, holy crap, that's fantastic. Yep. Oh, wow. I hope there's good fixing in this set to make it easy to cast the Abzan. <laughs> fetchable, fetchable, fetchable fixing? Fetchable, fetchable, fetchable fixing. <laughs> <laughs> New from Rob. Oh, man. Reminds me of surgery. Wait, what does? Katie, was it this one? The Mythos of Neth Nethra? This is reminds me of surgery? I think it was this one. Cause Hold on, wait. I hope, God, is I hope it's not this card? one. Jesus Christ. Go back, go back. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Look, there's, there's a little guy falling in his mouth. You see it? Oh, so this this is right before this. Yeah, that's, oh, the, wow. that's the cave painting. It's oh, that's really cool. Version. Yeah, that's awesome, actually. I don't think it is, obviously. But it's funny that those two connect like that in that in that, yeah. in that kind of, like, uh, loose way. Night Squad Commando, three mana. When it enters the battlefield, if you attack this turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature. What's that ability if you attack this raid. turn? Raid. Why don't they just say raid? Just say it. Because uh, we don't want to confuse people who have different mechanics that aren't in the set. But it is in the set. It is in the set. <laughs> if you attack this turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. That's cool, man. That's really cool. So this is literally just the white raid card from Cons of Tarkir, right? The 2-3 that makes a 1-1 one, one if you attack this turn. No, it's a 3-4 that makes a 3-4 bird. No, my dude. What are you saying right now? It's like Mardu... Wingmate Rock. Mardu Horde Chief or something. No, it's not Mardu Horde Chief. That was the, that was the cool one. Wingmate uh, Rock. Mardu... Yeah, it is Mardu Horde Chief. 2-3 three for 3. When Mardu Horde Chief enters the battlefield, if you attack with a creature this turn, put a 1-1 one, one white warrior on the battlefield. It's the same creature. Wingmate it's literally Rock. just a black Mardu Horde Chief. Ward Chief? Horde Chief. What the hell is a Ward Chief? Why did I say that? I don't know, man. Shut up. Serrated mm -hmm. Scorpion. A 1-2 for 1. When it dies, it deals 2 damage to each opponent, and you gain 2 life. This is a, the, If Mike was here, I'd be like, this is a commander staple, right? Because it says each opponent. I was going to say, I was gonna say uh, Two Headed Giant. <laughs> oh, that is good. I would play it in Two Headed Giant. Yeah. Give me all the Scorpions that are serrated. I mean, not in any other format that's ever existed, but two at a giant for sure. I wouldn't even play this in limited. Like, just a one. If it had death touch, yeah, but a one, two for one. You mutate onto this, dude. Playable. Yeah, now it's playable. Creatures your opponent control get neg one, neg one until end of turn, or cycle it. I like um, this card. Yeah, this seems sideboardable at the very least. Yeah. If there's a humans deck, I like this card. And you cycle Thank it. You. Well, it depends on how big the humans are, right? But, I mean, like, it depends on if there's a one, one tokens deck. That's what I'm thinking. The Zig, what's up? Two at a giant is the only way to play competitive magic. Prove me wrong. Nah, I can't do that. I we love, agree with you. Why I would we prove you wrong? My my two favorite two at a giant partners are both Katie and Rob. Those are my two favorites. Um, unbreakable bond, five mana. Return target. <laughs> return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield with a lifelink counter on it. Okay. Oh, this art is this art is adorable, dude. Look at all these arts. I love. Yeah. Someone said they didn't like the art in this set, and I'm like, I love the art direction in this set because it's like, it's like these these it's like human. It's interspecial, man. It's interspecial, interspecial. bonds. Yeah, you don't understand it. It's a gladiator format you of interspecial relationships. You wouldn't get it, man. It's interspecial. <laughs> I mean, this is just your typical five mana reanimate with a with a with a perk, right? Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> Unexpected fangs. What is this? Is he helping or is he hurting? Oh, I think he's helping. Oh, he's pulling that thing out. I think he's helping. No, I Two think mana. he's sucking the poison out. Put a f- <laughs> put a one one counter and a lifelink counter on target creature. For two mana. He's sucking the poison out. It's not bad. I don't hate it. Rob the Diddler. One blue black. Legendary Diddler. Whenever this creature enters the battlefield, diddle target creature. Each opponent gains a 1-1 one, one human soldier creature token named Child Services Officer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a boy. It's another boy. You put it on Someone another can boy. Make, that's a legit card that somebody can make right now with my photo. It's true. Someone needs to make that card, please. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next one. I mean, this card's fine, but I mean, it's not gonna—it's not constructed play. Well, it's good and limited. It's a good trick. Are you listening? I'm listening. Unlikely aid. Two man. You're not listening. Target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains indestructible. This is a reprint. It's good and limited, and that's—it it saw some constructed play. There's very fringe constructed play in like a deck that you just want to save your guy. What? So did it not? I could have sworn this was in like the. Like the, so. the black... I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. Void Beckoner. 8-8 eight, eight for 8. Jesus. Death Touch. Cycling 3. When you cycle it, put a Death Touch counter on target creature you control. The problem is, if I look at this card and I realize I'm never going to cast it for 8 mana, I'm just not interested, right? Like, you'll definitely play this in, uh, in limited, but I'll see you later. Oh, it is a three mana blade brand. That's true. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good way to look at it. Whisper Squad. Pss, 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 pss. One one for. Are we clicking? Are we, what are we doing? Are you looking? We're good. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, one one for one. Uh, search your library for a card named Whisper Squad. Put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Oh, it's just a rebel, right? This like card's it's... good. Yeah. If there keep, if there's an, arist- uh, an aristocrat's deck, this is a good card. What if it's a social library or graveyard for a card named Whisper Squad? Then that, I think that would actually be kind of broken, to be honest with you. That's pretty good, right? You just keep bringing yeah. them back. As long as you got gets... one. Yeah, this card seems good. Do we put it on a list? Yes, I think you do put this on a list. I think okay. this is a very good card. Another unassumingly good card. I mean, that was the only card since Mythos of Nithroid that we put on the list, right? Black's Week? Okay, no, I was just checking. I wasn't sure if I missed anything. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, wow. And then, then if let's, if, do you think there's anything else after Whisper Squad? Is this the last one? Uh, in black, I think there's one more. Oh dang, Zagoth Mamba. <laughs> Dude, do, do, you ever do the Zagoth Mamba number five? <laughs> are you a big fan of? Are you a big fan of Lubega? When you do that, there's no coming back. One one for one. Whenever this creature mutates, target creature and opponent control because it's negative. See again, like that's what I mean. Like you put it on your one one. You put it on your you mutate on your one one, and like giving a creature neg two neg two and limited is actually really strong. Like this I, is, oh, you're constructing I, it. I would need to you're look at. Of, you want to see would, that? You want to see if there's enough? I want to see if there's how many two drop mutates, how many three drop mutates. This is very good. I agree. This could you. be very good. I agree with you. I'm gonna put it on the list because I think still it's got it's I think got it things going. And also, this set is encouraging, um, like, Abzan. It's encouraging um, Sultai, right? So, like, the green could be very relevant for the for the black for the black cards, for the black mutate cards, right? So. Yep. All right, it's going to be the last one, right? Guaranteed. Uh, oh! Oh! Wait, we have colorless in this one, too. Oh, man. That's how we had to break it up. I had to break it up in two so that they're a very similar number. Adaptive Shimmer, five mana. Adaptive enters the battlefield with three 1-1 one, one counters on it. This it's is sucky. Flat. Why do they have flash? I don't understand. I don't get it. I'm going to keep going. Crystalline Giant. Three mana for a 3-3. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose a kind of counter at, at random that it doesn't... How do you do this? Like, from a from a technical standpoint on this card, I don't understand it, right? Like, of course you could do it. Of course you could do it. It's not it's not physically incapable, right? Frank Karsten put an article but out on how to do it. it's cumbersome. Right? So you have Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, and plus one, plus one. You have ten. So I need either two six-sided dice or a ten-sided die. Or twenty. And I need to... Sure, a twenty. Right. At first. But once it has one of these... Yeah, because it keeps getting more, right? So the next turn you have nine. And then a 20-sided dice is oh, just that's hard. A, that's, yeah, that's rough. Right? Or then like you're like, okay, one through nine is one. Ten through 18 is another. 19, 20 don't count. And it's just at that point you're just like, okay, this is just a cumbersome exercise. Yeah. And on the card you can be like, flying is one. First strike is two. Death touch is three. So it's easy to number them from the card. But it's like, 
You can't do 2d6. Well, you can. You can just be like 1 through 10, and then 11 and 12 don't count, right? And then 1 through 9, and then 10, 11, 12 don't count. Like, there's no... Unless you have a 9-sided die, and then a 10-sided then a die. Like, unless you have the exact... No, the chances are different. Is that true? I oh, that is true. Yeah, no, that is true. You're right. Because you have a higher chance of hitting a seven, which would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, you'd have a higher chance. Like your chance of hitting reach is higher than hitting. And you couldn't do you couldn't do two six because you could do two. You're you're not gonna hit a two, right? There's only like you're you have the lowest chance of hitting a two because it's only one and one rather than seven. So your odds of hitting first strike, and you could never hit flying, so you couldn't do two sixes. So never mind. I have no idea what I have no idea the conversation that you're having right now with chat. I, I I'm trying I, I'm okay, so you cannot, I'm never gonna play this card. You cannot do two D sixes because you'll never hit a one. Or you can start at two. If you okay, even if you start at two, right, between two and, and eleven, you'll never your odds of hitting a seven are much higher than hitting a two. So you're much Listen. more pref, you're much more preferred to hit flying or uh, to hit reach than flying, right? That's my point. Listen, like it's just a fucking confusing card that has. It's a d. Tw- it's a d twenty. You roll. You roll it right, and then one and two is one. Two and three. Three and four. All right, four and five. Okay, and then once you have one, then you number them in order again, and then, and then you take two off. You re-roll on a seventeen and an eighteen. You know what I'm saying? You guys. That, are, it's too confusing. The, the, the thing that frustrates me is after all of that, it's a three three for three, which is actually just fine because if you're getting one of these every turn. It's actually decent, right? Yeah. Like the first turn, good. it's a 3-3 three, three flyer for three. The next turn, it's a 4-4 four, four flyer for three. The next turn, it's a 4-4 four, four flying first striker for three. Like, it just keeps getting better. You're just mad because it's playable. I'm I'm more mad now that it's playable That's because it's just I'm a saying. frustrating card. That's what I'm saying. I grab bag. Oh, hold up. For some, for, uh, awesome Allen. You use 10 cards that are named for the thing and shuffle and draw it up. Okay, I agree that's a better way to do it. But also, like, to have to keep 10 extra cards that have, like, yeah. flying, first strike, reach. Like, you put 10 extra cards in your deck box when you go to an event just because you're playing this card. The card's frig- The card's good. I- I'm just mad that I have to... Like, it just seems really cumbersome. I have become... Oh, wow. Get the 7 Mary 3 <laughs> references, boy. <laughs> I can't go down to the water's edge. That's why you have the card counters. Right, but like they're they're different colors, right? So wouldn't I be able to see which one I'm drawing? Yeah. And I can't do a plus one plus one, right? Like also I still I'm still having to keep ten things with me and pick one randomly, right? Like, I don't know. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, sarcasm. I get you. Farfinder, three mana for a one one. This is basically a vigilant pilgrim's eye instead of yeah. flying. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for basic land, reel it, put it in your hand, shuffle your library. Cards like this usually good. see play. Really? I don't think it's any good. Okay. It's a skittering surveyor that costs uh, the same, but instead of a 1-2, it has vigilance. And you're trying to convince me it's playable? I'm trying to convince you that you can mutate onto this. You can mutate on any creature. <laughs> <laughs> I have nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? <laughs> can you mutate on me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, I, but... I, I, I'm a 3-5 human. But Frank, in the, can you mutate on me? But in the mutate deck, this is good, right? Like, because you're getting a land, you're getting your fourth land, and like your mutate creature has vigilance. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it on the list. I think I'm it's going. I don't care about you. It's going. I think it has I think it's I think it's decent. It's a three it's a one one that draws you a card and you can mutate onto it. I'm just happy you're happy, man. Can you not mutate humans? Is that a thing? I don't think I even read that part. No, no, that's not a thing. Really? Oh, did we just take every ca- take card? Uh, put it over or under a non-human creature you own. Holy cow! Wow, see that changes everything, man. I'm stronger than I thought. I'm resistant. Yeah, you're something, all right. Just delete every mutate. Okay, card. so there's gonna be a cycle of these. We're gonna go through them quick. Adatha Crystal, three mana. Uh, add Abzan mana, cycling two. What do you think about these? Not playable. These are, they're not playable. No. Okay. no. Uh, Ket- Ketria Crystal. You can Mysterious skip. Mysterious egg. An 0-2 for 1. Whenever it mutates, put a 1-1 counter on it. Oh, this is cute because it's like, it's the 1-1 except it's an 0-2. But then it has a perk when you mutate onto it. I don't hate this it. One, this one's not bad. I don't hate it. I think, again, it's, it just depends on the mutate deck, right? 
Right. So like I think that there there are two different types. Like you see the the was it a mamba? The one that gives neg two neg two whenever you mutate? Yeah. Okay, so like a I little think this... bit of Katie on my yeah. mind. Yeah, you know, like a yeah. So the, yeah, the mysterious egg is like a my guess would be like a teamer style mutate deck. The other one would be like an Abzan style mutate deck. I think there's there can be two different types based on the colors. But like the thing I'm looking at is like all of the creatures you play that emerge that you emerge into. Um, I'm gonna say emerge because I'm talking about the Eldrazi from that format, yeah. format, right? Like you would play a card like Farfinder. Like people did play Pilgrim's Eye, got a land. And then cast like Elder Deep Fiend off of it for four mana the next turn, right? Like you'd sacrifice yeah. your your Pilgrim's Eye into an Elder Deep Fiend. Sure. Like those cards were valuable when you were just using them as vehicles to to reduce the cost of the creature you're going to put on top of it. You know what I mean? Sure. So I think if you look at I think if you look at Mutate as like a merge, where like you're getting rid of the creature underneath and that creature is just providing you value or like a vehicle to mutate into. I'm with I, you on that. I think it's worthwhile. Right, I think that's kind of how you have to look at it. Yeah, I, that kind of changes the way I think about it a little bit. The Ozolith, one mana. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. That's where they go when you die. <laughs> uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all the counters from the Ozolith on the target creature. This card has way too much going on that I, I think I'd have to spend a good amount of time to figure out if this is You're also good. forcing me to play with like a bunch of like lifelink, death touch, vigilance counters, and I don't want to do that. I would literally or not one, play one with this counters. card. Sp mm, yeah, I guess so. But like, do I really want to play a card that all it does is save my counters? So, um, Saffron Olive said something about this card being in um, it is the, sc the Chris scales deck. Guy. The scales deck, interesting. Yeah, because you you like you can sacrifice all your dudes to put counters onto your Ravager, and then sacrifice your Ravager, and it goes onto this, and then you put it on something at the beginning of combat. What are you saying right now? It can definitely get nutty. The problem is like okay, so you're right, and I think it's very good. It's probably good in the decks it's good in, but those decks are like real nuanced. I'm not even certain it's good in those decks that we think it's good in. That's right. What I, that's the, that's what I'm trying to get to. It's definitely the it's the definition of a card that's like that that doesn't do anything without a lot of other things happening. Yeah. Like I need hardened scales. I need a creature that has a bunch of counters on it. I need the Ozolith, and then I need another creature to put those counters onto. But the yeah, hardened yeah. scales just gonna give that creature more counters anyway. So like, do I really need this? Wouldn't I just rather play like a different creature instead? This could at least be good in. Uh, if I don't there think was this is a sleeper of... card at all. To be honest with you. I I think that this could be good. Maybe you could do something with um, what is the two mana artifact dude that whenever you whenever you diddle it, it uh, adds a one one counter to all your artifact dudes. Uh, steel <laughs> steel overseer. Steel overseer. I'm I'm trying to think of applications in standard for this card. Is steel overseer in standard? Yeah. You're like, yeah, of course he is. Everyone's playing Steel Overseer. Yeah, playing Steel Overseer. Of course he, everybody knows that. You no wonder dumb. you haven't been enjoying Standard. I'm going to go to the next card now. Yeah. Do we put this on the list? I don't even know. I, I, if this... If Katie, this, should I put this on the list? Do you think this, this is good This makes the enough? list because people think that it should make the list. Okay. I agree with that. There's enough uh, There's enough talk about it. I'm saving you negative comments on YouTube. Yeah, by telling you to I can't believe list. you didn't put the Ozolith on the list, yeah, you stupid idiot. idiot. Look at this six-card combo with Ozolith. Rawgrin Crystal. That's a Jest Guy Crystal. Savai Crystal. That's the Mardu Crystal. Savai. Sleep Savai, huh? yeah? I wouldn't Savai. put on the list personally. I agree with you, Katie. I wouldn't either. Two mana. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Oh, you're, I'm done. Sold. That's a prismatic. That's a prophetic prism for all I like. Yep. Prophetic? Prismatic? Pr prism, what's it called? Prophetic? Prophetic prism. Okay. Sacrifice it. Target creature doesn't untap during its controller's next. I like that it doesn't cost anything to do that. No, and it's very relevant. This is not bad. This the the reason card, this though. card's good, actually, and the ability is good, because I've tried to make... Um, there's a one in a blue uh, dude that taps to add two mana for artifacts only, and I've tried to make decks, uh, artifact decks, to use Mystic Forge, and you would get run over early by stuff. The fact that you can slow down a creature from attacking is pretty relevant one thing one thing you can do is slow things down but the thing this card can't do is go down to the water's edge no it didn't even see if it, it could i wouldn't but it saw who did you know what i mean yeah 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 <laughs> I, <laughs> how long were you holding that you were like uh, this off you're like this off to the side uh, should i put this on the list 
<laughs> I think you should because two, two mana, mana artifacts, artifacts that draw a card. Right, exactly. Like these, these traditionally have some sort of application. Whether it's just an, an artifact deck that goes wide, spring draw a trap. Spring draw trap. That's a hard word. Can you say that? Say that three times fast. Spring draw trap. Spring draw trap. Spring draw trap. Oh fuck you, dude. One mana. Ah. Get, okay, guess what this artifact has. Flash. Flash. That's right. Sacrifice it deals three damage to any target. So this is a five. This is your typical five mana lightning bolt or four mana lightning bolt. If you don't do it on the same turn, you cast it. This card. You're telling me this hunk of metal has flash. It looks very slow and cumbersome. Yeah. Very cumbersome. The Goth Crystal is the salt lake crystal. The final, the final this crystal. The salt crystal. This, the salt. It's the salt crystal. I'm going to assume there's no other cards after the Goth Crystal, so I'm not even going to go to the next card before I before I conclude this set review. And the the cards in gold and are the, the cards in colorless that we that we like were Crystalline Giant, Farfinder, Mysterious Egg, the Ozolith, and Sleeper Dart. With the Ozolith being a little on the edge there. Ozolith Thank is you barely guys. hanging on. So much for watching. Uh, part one of our set review. If you're watching on Twitch, we're not leaving. We're just going to end this part one of the set review. I'm going to go refill my drink in between. But I'm going to get some out, coffee. Check out CoolStuffInc.com. Every Wednesday, I have a new article. You can use promo code FRANK5 to get 5% off. Check out Manatraders.com. Down below in the description, you can use that link and promo code to get 20% off your first three months. Right below Rob. And... Uh, Check me out at patreon.com slash franklapore. These are all great ways to support the channel. You can also like and subscribe on Twitch or on YouTube. Those are also awesome. And uh, I'm going to go. I'm, gonna, I'm just just because like, I'm paranoid. Wait. Oh, there's lands here too. The lands are in this one. We almost ended before going through the lands. They're colorless, so they were, I, I included them in this one. No, you won't normally have a set of lands. I, I, other... I took everything. White, black, blue, red, green... Colorless cards, uh, lands, and and multicolor cards. I took all all eight of those groups and I divided them in such a way that they were they were equal parts, right? So like there's like one thirty one and one twenty. So do we have to do the lands now? Yeah, we got to. But there's only there's only two there's two lands that are in a cycle. Bloodfell caves. These are all part of a cycle. If a deck really needs, um, they don't need these anymore. You needed these before. But now you can play the tri lands. Correct. I agree with you. So I'm not gonna. Blossoming Sands, Bonders Enclave, add a colorless, or three in a tap, draw a card, activate this only if you control a creature of power four or greater. This I card's like really, really good. Yeah. Um, my only That's issue with this card is it's the definition of win more, right? Hey, if you control a big creature, you can draw more cards, right? That's if true. you're behind and you don't have a creature, you don't get to draw more cards, right? It's a weird... It's weird... Um... It is good for Eldrazi. That's great, actually. It it makes colorless and like all of your Eldrazi have four or more power that you care about. Thought not seer and uh and uh Rally Smasher. How god, how did I forget that guy's name? And it also like card. it's good with uh Elder Deep Fiend as well, so Dismal Backwater. Nope. Evolving Wilds. Mm, I like this art though. Art's sweet. Yeah, the art's really sweet. That's a the great, great looking Evolving Wilds. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong, Velvet Walls is a good card. Like it's just a it's just a solid classic card. It's just not constructed play well, really. Mm. Uh Indothra, Indotha Triumph. These cards are mind blowing to me. This land cycle is like my favorite land cycle in, in, in God knows how long. What? Are you okay? No, I'm sorry, go ahead. Right, what do you these are just... I was gonna tell you since since we're gonna talk about the cycle, why don't you just go to your favorite go to your Soul Tie one, but there may be another land in between, so never mind. There is, there's one more land in between because I assume the last one is Zagatha. Yeah. But here's my problem. Do we call Sultai Zagatha now? I don't no, know. Hell no. I think we're just sticking with Sultai, right? It's bug. No, it's not. You... It's bug. No, it's not. It's okay, bug. but then you can never it's call bug. it Jund again. You just gotta call it black or green, right? Like Berg. Yeah, just call it Berg. I'm writing all the Check out my Berg, my Berg Bob deck. Yeah, it's Ber Berg with Bert. That's what we're gonna call it. Yeah, these cards are insane. The fact that they're plain swan, they're three mana types. You can crack them. Do you think these cards are going to see modern play? Nope, no chance. I, I disagree with you. I think they're. I think you're. I think if you looked at the number of times where you, the lands you fetch are at the end of the turn, I think the percentage is very, very high. I think most decks in modern can get away with playing these on turn one without much punishment. And I also think if you put them as a one of in your modern deck, if it's three that, colors, that I could see. I think you can, can definitely definitely play like as a one of and search for them. I could see one. I could see that. Yeah. And also, like, um, the cycling is not irrelevant in late games, right? Like, No, 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 no. That, that's that's huge. Yeah. 
I think I think you're underestimating not maybe not you right now, but like I think a lot of people might be underestimating like how frequently you're gonna go end of turn crack my fetch lane get a land, and I think the the come into play untap is or the come into play tapped is not as as relevant, especially because if you need an untap lane, you can still get those with your fetch lands. It's not like you're you're taking out your your tapped shock lands, right? Yep. Um, but I think these these have ex uh, like a lot of uses in. I mean, I was, I, I I know I'm gonna get some shit for this, but I could even see like playing them as the same situation, like a one of in a legacy teamer deck. Like, you just find a tri land with a fetch land, and there are gonna be times where you don't need it that turn, or you can untap into it. You know what I mean? I think it's strong. So, I don't think uh, I don't think legacy because I think those lands are already gonna come into play untapped as it is. You don't have to pay life for it. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. If you're from with actual dual lands, is very strong. So yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but I think it's just worth considering. I um, I agree with you in modern though. I do agree. I could see it as a one of, and, and if you're in if you're in a shard, um, it's it's definitely worth it to run one. Yeah, and I think pioneer is obviously like I mean pioneers. I think the power level of pioneer that if you're playing a three color deck, you'll just play these. So. Oh, they, these all these did was just help pioneer mana bases because pioneer pioneer is pretty bad right now. Yeah, mana base. These are these. Are, yeah, I agree. These are great. Um, I I love these lands. They're super exciting. These are one of the most exciting parts of this set for me, and uh, yeah, that's. I'm happy for you, man. <laughs> Dude, just... Jungle Hollow, another one of the cycle. Ketria Triome. Ketria. I'm gonna write these down. K T R I. Raugrim. Raugrin. R A U G R I N. Uh, yep. Yeah. And Rugged Highlands, Savai. Savai? Savai. Why is that? That sound like the, the funniest Savai? thing. I don't know. Scout, not to be confused with Savvy, which is the uh, the workshop no. at uh, at Galaxy's Edge. Swiftwater Cliffs, Thornwood Falls, Tranquil Cove, Windscarred Crag, Zagoth Triome. And that's the end. That is the end. Everything I said previously about those links, the promo codes in the description, the way to support the channel, check those all out. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching, guys.